Uh, number two in the conference behind Garcia in ERA, uh, Natasha. Yes, the Huskies have quite uh, the figuring out to do today. And yesterday it was all about Garcia. And they just don't get to take a day off again coming into today uh, facing Faremo. Um, Faremo throws a rise, <laughs> screw, curve, backdoor curve, change, drop. She has all the things. And so it's going to be interesting to see how the Huskies adjust. All right. So welcome to all of you for game number two. Yep, the Huskies digging in and trying to even up the series. Double header. They say a beautiful day for a ball game. Let's play two. All right, first pitch strike dealt from Faremo. Calling the balls and strikes. Brandon Blum, Mark Craver over at first, Tanya Craig at second, and Calvin Walker at third. Sis Bates leading the Pac-12 with those 57 hits. Top five in the nation there. 432 average. Number two in the conference. Takes outside, and she's really sets the tone for Washington, not only offensively, but as we talked about defensively. And Sis Bates, I mean, she's just one of a kind of a player. She brings so much passion to the game, and you can just see her. She's a vocal leader. She plays with a lot of energy. She doesn't have to do anything, and so I think that's what makes her so fun to watch. That one's high and outside Bates coming into the week and 301 career hits. You can add another one after yesterday. The 302 trailing only two other players on the active lift. Sammy Williams of Iowa State leads them all. She came in at 311. Next pitch outside, three and one. We didn't see too many three ball counts yesterday. In fact, Garcia didn't get a walk until the seventh inning, I believe. So an early count in favor of those Huskies. And as we mentioned yesterday, they do such a great job at the plate with their discipline and drawing those walks. And that's what makes their offense so powerful is that they are disciplined. They have a plan up there. They're looking for a certain pitch. And then they're able to execute when they actually unleash. And so it'll be great to see their adjustments today. Uh, Garcia yesterday definitely was pounding the zone early in the count. She wasn't messing around, didn't go too deep in two counts and was getting ahead of the hitters right away. Washington at 157 walks. They have 19 more than the second place team in the conference, Arizona State. Full count, swing and a ground ball, short stop. Bates sweeps it up. Actually, Perez, excuse me, Bates sweeps it up and throws out her short stop counterpart for Washington on a 6-3 put out. And let's check out the UCLA defense. The Bruins with Gooden, Brady, and Jordan tonight getting the start in game one at least in right field for Kuro. Jordan just played on offense as a designated player yesterday. Malaulu came in late in the game yesterday over at third. Perez and Washington Wiz start where they finished yesterday and it's Faremo and Garcia the battery. All right, and a strike offered to Klingler. Klingler getting the start in the second spot. This is the more familiar position for her. Yesterday she started in the third spot in uh, Heather Tarr's lineup with Reynolds for the first time this season, hitting second. So interesting to see the change made today, and this was their offense going into the weekend. This one sky to left center field. Gooden calls off Brady with the better route to the ball and two quick outs. Yes, yeah, so it was interesting to see the change that they made from Sammy Reynolds from the three in the, to the two spot coming into the weekend, knowing that usually that they had a Klingler in that two spot and just maybe going off the fact that Reynolds had a hot bat coming into the weekend and, and just wanting to get her some more ABs. Yeah, and when you put Klingler down second in the conference in RBI and home run, I think puts Reynolds up there, just how the Bruins like it, with nobody on, two out, as a swing and a foul. We told you at the beginning, and it's so key that the Bruins shut down any attack from Washington with two outs. They were 0 for 7 with two outs. Reynolds 0 for 3 last night. Not too often you see her wearing the collar. Fremo rocks and fires in. Boy, that was a big... Swing and a miss for Reynolds, and just like that, 0 oh and 2. And this pitch is up in the zone. This is a rise ball, and that coming at your eyes, that looks like a hamburger coming at you that you want to take a big, huge hat at that. Faremo last week setting a new career high, 17 strikeouts in the one hit shutout of Oregon State. You know, in any other week, Faremo might have been the Pac 12 pitcher of the week, but uh, her teammate Rachel Garcia threw a no hitter, 12 strikeouts against the Beavers. Back to 
the circle goes for Ramo. 11 and 2 on the season, 0.827 complete games on the season, just inside. And the count goes to 1 and 2 to Reynolds. Reynolds, a Pac 12 player of the week, at 556, three home runs against Oregon. Working on a career high total with those 10 home runs. Swing and a flare into shallow center. And it's not the power we were expecting there, but it is good enough nonetheless for a base hit. And it's the first hit for Washington with two outs in the series. And if you're Sammy Reynolds, you will take it, especially coming off of yesterday and being shut out at the plate. You'll take anything at this moment just to be able to put something in play and let it uh, let the softball gods take care of you. <laughs> well, and you talked a little bit about the repertoire for Rayma, but what does she provide differently that the Huskies have to look out for? Well, she definitely throws more down in the zone. She has more command of her changeup, which is hard to believe because we know that Garcia has a tremendous changeup. But Faramo definitely works a little bit more down in the zone, although she will go up in the zone as well. But I think we'll see more ground balls and we'll see a little bit more um, of those fisters and those flares today. Faramo coming in in the top 10 hits per seven innings, allowed only three, ninth in the nation in ERA. Unbelievable when you see 114 strikeouts and eight walks. That's strikeout to walk ratio, second in the nation. Did she go around? And the first base umpire, Mark Craver, on appeal says no. So the count evens up at one and one to Morgan Flores. There's a good look at Morgan. And it looks like she just was able to hold it back a little bit, but I think it can go either way on hmm. that. <laughs> Morgan, 56 home runs in her Washington career, fourth all time, takes up an inch. She was fourth a couple of years ago, 23 home runs. That was what we talked about last night when Washington's season came to an unceremonious end in Oklahoma City against UCLA. Ten inning affair that was capped by a walk off three run home run by Rachel Garcia. This one's line left field on the run, good, and it's over her head and off the scoreboard, and it's a home run for Morgan Flores. So yesterday, no two out hits. Today, two of them, and the Huskies take the lead, 2-0. So and this is a great swing by Flores. This is an off-speed pitch, and Flores is able to hold back and stay back and just Garcia, unleash on that one. and send that out. Flores hitting her ninth home run of the season. RBI is number 40 and 41, and the Huskies do strike first, taking a 2-0 lead here in the top of the first inning. And now it's Noel He who went 0 for 3 yesterday, stepping in and taking outside, hitting 308 on the season. And we talked about it. Washington this season, they've had a lot of the power, and that is a byproduct of how disciplined they've been at the plate. This one's skied out of play. I think this is the Husky offense that we are used to seeing, yeah. and so nice to see them settle in today and, and just, you know, attack from the beginning. Huskies liking the view from on top, finally, leading this Bruin team 2 nothing. This pitch, just checking there. He, so the count goes to two and one. It's staggering when you look at the numbers. Washington since 2017, when Rachel Garcia started pitching for them, hitting 306 against any pitcher not Rachel Garcia. Against Garcia, 100 points lower, 207. And the on base percentage is a smart difference, too, as that one's a strike. 430 on base percentage against pitchers not named Rachel Garcia. Against Garcia, just 289. And you got to think for the Husky lineup that, you know, no offense to Faramo, but they're going to be licking their chops. <laughs> Garcia's not in the circle today. Let's be aggressive. Let's get after it. A swing and a miss ends the inning, but 
the two-run blast from Morgan Flores to left field. A couple of two-out hits from the Huskies, stuff that he didn't see a whole lot of yesterday. And they get the early jump on the Bruins. Two to nothing the lead after half an inning. Morgan Flores supplying the power. Gatorade Zero. All the electrolytes, zero sugar. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Anything you can be, I can be greater. Uh, sooner or later, I'm greater than you. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. Hey. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Get more out of Zero. Now available with protein. New movies and top hits, now at Redbox. Willy's Wonderland, starring Nicolas Cage. Vanquish, starring Morgan Freeman and Ruby Rose. And the theatrical home release of Tom and Jerry. Rent new movies at the kiosk and on demand. From action and suspense to comedy and drama, Redbox has something for everyone. Visit redbox.com for all the ways to watch. Softball is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Rawlings. Champions choose Rawlings. Back at Easton Stadium. Yes, the LA skyline. Very nice on this spring day. All right, checking out UCLA's starting line. They went to Kinsley, Washington in the leadoff spot. First time this season celebrating her birthday. Did very well. Perez with the home run. Jordan, the power as well. Yesterday, Garcia, the DP today. Wiz, Brady, Garcia, Malahulu, and Gooden rounding out the lineup. And in the circle for Washington, Gabby playing dealt her first loss since February 28th, 2020. A span of 35 appearances. And UCLA will be facing her yet again, Natasha. Yes, and it's gonna be a new day for them. So it'll be interesting to see how playing approaches these hitters a little bit differently than yesterday. Yesterday, she was getting behind early in the count. And as we can already see, she is getting ahead. She went three plus innings yesterday, four runs. Three hits, three walks, three strikeouts. The three walks, very atypical for her as well. And that was the shortest start since that loss against Texas, February 28, 2020, where she only went only one inning on that one. Off the end of the bat by Washington, and that's snagged on the fly there. And that is the first out, Espinosa making the put out. And it looks like Kinsley just hit this off the end of her bat. Uh, the pitch is a little bit out of the zone and pops that up. That'll bring on the left-hand hitting Brianna Perez. Six-game hitting streak as a result of that home run. She's now the leader for UCLA in home runs and RBI. Also running a 10-game on base streak. And as we talked about yesterday, Kelly Inouye Perez saying that perhaps the most underrated player in Division I. Well, I mean, with performances like yesterday, she's not going to be underrated for long. Yeah, I think she, I think the cat's out of the bag. I think everybody <laughs> knows. Everybody's on to you, Brianna Perez. The bunt pulled it back and now ahead in the count 2 0 with Jordan on deck. And UCLA coming in 338, eighth in the nation hitting. They've also been doing very well. Home run wise, one and a half per contest, 12th in the nation. Also 10th in the nation, over seven runs a game. Two and no counts. Check swing, a strike gets away from Flores. It'll be two and one. You know, it's incredible when you look at some of these national numbers and just going through them. Maybe it's a hobby, Natasha, <laughs> I don't know. But Oklahoma, I, I don't know that we've seen an offense like this recently or if ever. I mean, they're averaging 11 and a half runs a game. 11 and a half runs a game. I would game. say ever. That is rare. That is very rare, and that's that's special. Um, but that's a team you want to face. Like, is that real? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd probably have to say that they would love to have that rematch back with uh, UCLA after that College World Series final a few years ago when the Bruins set the record for largest margin of win. 
An opening game 16 to three before they came back and won 5-4 to snag the 12th NCAA championship. Here's Plain. That one bounces up there and the count goes to full to Perez. Brianna Perez, Jr. From Martinez, California, went to Alhambra High School. Third team All-American in 2020. Led the Bruins with 31 runs. Had nine or more game, nine games with the two or more runs batted in last season, also to pace the Bruins. Swing at a line drive, just foul. I think what's so intriguing about Perez is that she's got speed. And I think last night she is leading the team in home runs yep. now to going into today. And so speed, power, she can drop a bunt. That is a lethal weapon. And that's what makes her so great. And I think that's why we just think she's so great. And that I don't think she's underrated, yep. <laughs> you know, after last night. If she's the five-tool player. Certainly out there, short stop swinging. This one's lofted left side. You know, just watching her in batting practice too, just spraying the balls all fields. Very savvy hitter too. That's a good player to have in the number two spot. And Kelly Noy Perez, who said about her and then said about Kinsley Washington, another player that tends to get forgotten with all these superstars for the Bruins. But players that, you know, once they matriculate and move on, those are the players you're gonna miss. Absolutely, like while while they're here, they're flying under the radar, but once they leave, you feel, realize you have this big, huge gap and these big holes to fill. All right, Gabby playing up and in and a walk. It's not something that we've talked about a lot prior to this weekend, but Gabby playing issuing her fourth walk of the weekend. And coming into the weekend, she had not done a whole lot of that. Very good control. In fact, it's her 30th walk of the season against 255 strikeouts. Not even close. You, you can't even see the second place player in the Pac-12 or in the nation in the rearview mirror. All right, so the Bruins have a base runner here in the bottom of the first, and it's Aaliyah Jordan, 370, four home runs. We might stamp that number four. And then taking off it from first is Perez, and she is safe. Stealing second base. 10 for 10 now on the season. And I think that this is a great call in this situation. I've got my biggest hitter up at the plate, one of my speedsters on. Let's just take a chance and see if we can uh, get in there and get this stolen base. And it looks like she just gets underneath the tag. I'm calling her safe. Hmm. Yeah, Perez and Washington, when you combine them, 21 of 21 on the year. So something also to note. The speed at the top of the Bruins lineup. They've been very successful and they've chosen those spots. Jordan back in there. One and one count we mentioned a couple years ago in the national championship season. All Pac-12 first team. She had 13 home runs, 61 runs batted in. So we had a line drive up the middle. Here comes Perez rounding third, waving her in is Kirk Walker. She slides, she scores. Jordan goes to second on the throw, and the Bruins cut the lead of Washington in half. That is nice, timely clutch hitting by Jordan, and I think that's what we are going to expect to see today is just to single them to death. Usually we got a little spoiled yesterday seeing those home runs, but I think that this is the forte of the Bruin offense is just getting those singles and getting that clutch timely hitting. And just the dynamic of her stealing second base and then having to contend with that. Yeah, that's what you call a little softball 101. If you can manufacture some runs and get some runners um, in scoring position, stealing, I think that's how you do it. Garcia in their first pitch swinging, and she'll hook it foul. Yesterday, picking up her eighth win of the season. Also scoring two runs. In fact, she outscored the Huskies on her own. Also had a walk in the victorious effort. Garcia going for a sixth complete game of the season. It's a perfect eight and no. And now with the counterpart, she's gonna be the Olympian in 2021. Gabby Plain is on the preliminary roster for Australia to be cut down still in a couple of months. And that pitch comes inside. Heather Tarr, the winningest coach 
among all sports in Washington history. 693, 254 and one for record. Two, uh, two Pac-12 championships, 2009 national champion. And they and UCLA split the Pac-12 title in 2019. Strike taken. Co-champions, a 20 and four record. A lot of history between these two teams. We talk about the 2019 season, but they have run into one another throughout history in the postseason. UCLA, in fact, beat Washington in 1999 Women's College World Series final. UW beat UCLA to reach the 2017 semis where they lost to Florida. And that aforementioned 2019 campaign. Two and two now the count to Garcia. I just love Coach Tarr's approach, especially coming into this weekend. You know, this is obviously a very important weekend for both teams. Um, but just her her demeanor of, you know, we're the underdog and we're just going to continue to be us. We're going to score runs, play defense, and do all the small things in hopes to create some big things. This one's grounded shortstop. Oh, yeah, base. They call her the human vacuum cleaner. She's up to the task, made a nice play yesterday as well. 6-3 in the putouts on a holding pattern at second is Jordan with two out. And Delaney Wiz, who started the series at third, moved to first last night, starts this one at first, and presumably in the second half of this doubleheader, she might be behind the plate. Yeah, it's kind of a toss-up where we'll end up seeing her, right? <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, you can't even flip a coin. Playing the six-foot senior deals it inside, and the count is one and zero. Oh. Yeah, well, and something that's been—I want to say calling card, but then I'm dating myself. Who knows what a calling card is anymore? But the staple for UCLA has been—they recruit players that are able to play so many different positions. Absolutely, and like I said, a good Bruinism is good talent is flexible. If you're willing and, and wanting to learn another position, they absolutely will throw you in a different position just to make sure that that lineup is deep. Gabby Plain, 79 and 10 career record. Needs just one more win to tie Stephanie Burns for ninth all time at the University of Washington. This one's grounded to shortstop again. Bates backing up. Quick throw to first. Another nice play. And that will end the inning. But the Bruins get a run back on the RBI single by Aaliyah Jordan. We go to the second inning. It's 2-1, to one, Washington. That one is true. Excellence knows it's not going to be perfect. It's about putting courage first, taking risks, trusting my athleticism, canceling out the negativity. Because preparation equals confidence. And confidence is born from courage. What's your mantra? When you're building a business, it's easy to find a bank who says all the right things. They'll say they have the products and services you need, and blah, blah, blah. They go on and on saying they'll blah, blah this and blah, blah that. But when it comes time to actually expanding your business, well, that's when you need Pacific Premier Bank. We're completely dedicated to supporting our clients' growth, and that's no blah, blah, blah. Pacific Premier Bank, where business meets opportunity. At Easton Stadium on the campus of UCLA, Washington 2, UCLA 1, and Natasha. Uh, Megan Faramo, when you talk with uh, head coach Kelly Noy Perez, kind of 2020 was a, a kind of a blessing in disguise here. Yeah, you didn't get to play the full season, and you didn't have Rachel Garcia, who was on the USA national team with the, well, the Stand Beside Her tour, but Megan Faramo had to be out on an island. She didn't have the comfort of pitching around with Garcia, and the spotlight thrust on her, and she really stepped up in her stead. Yes, Coach anyways uh, says that having that time period of the COVID year that really allowed Faramo to blossom and to really come into her own and to have that feeling of being a leader and not necessarily having to rely on being a buffer around Garcia. 
She had the uh, U19 gold, won the World Cup at the WBSC, went 3-0 in an Olympic trial event, 21 and two-thirds innings. That was all prior to last season. And then had the Softball America Player of the Year honors and going 13-1. and one. Starts an inside after the strike to Husky. Husky, Lynch, and Espinoza. And UCLA against Oregon State last week in Natasha, just dominant. Three hits, including the Garcia no-hitter. That's incredible. Three hits over th from the three pitchers. Hmm. They only gave up three hits, and I think that that's remarkable. When you have a staff like that and you can depend on three different pitchers on any given moment, that is very, very powerful. This one's grounded left side, squirts away from Malaulu, and getting on base, Husky. And we're going to see that was a hard hit ball, and they're going to give Husky the base hit, and well deserved. Yeah, that's a hard hit ball. And as Malu, she just needs to react and get down. And that's a tough, tough play. Washington certainly picking their spots right now. And Lynch chomping at the bit. 0 for 3 yesterday, two strikeouts against Garcia. Showing bunt. And good job for, and that one squirts away over at first and going down to third base on the air. Husky goes to third, Lynch is on the air. Washington just couldn't handle the throw. And now two on. And this is a perfectly placed bunt. And this is the small things that you're talking about with the defense that you got to take care of the ball on that. Uh, it gets away from Washington. And those are the plays that you need to be making because that could be the difference in the end. Well, Washington, who has supplanted Vines. Vines had the error for UCLA yesterday at second base. And now the E4 allowing Lynch to reach. And Husky goes down to third base. So it's first and third and nobody out. Certainly the composure of uh, Faremo will be tested as her compatriot on the Bruins. He's handling the bat today. Garcia looks on. And now Lisa Fernandez is going to come out and going to chat things up with uh, Megan Faremo. So, Megan, just a sophomore. I mean, we talked about how seasoned and how much international experience she has, but still growing into the role, to say the least, uh, Natasha. Yes, and I think sometimes you forget that she is a sophomore, and I look at her just thinking that she is at least a junior, senior, and obviously, yes, the COVID year. But in terms of experience, she technically really is a sophomore and hasn't really been thrown in those big, big pressure moments because, you know, again, she didn't get to go through Pac-12 last year. She didn't throw in College World Series yeah. um, without a Rachel Garcia. So I think uh, we've yet to really see her blossom, blossom. Yeah, even before last year, she was the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year in 2019 at 11 complete games, 16 and four. Already 40 wins in her career. And while they didn't wait long, Rachel Garcia is coming out of the dugout. And she's going to take over on the circle. Are you surprised, Natasha? I'm actually not surprised. And I think that this is a good call because this game is important. Game two is important in terms of controlling and keeping the momentum for this weekend. And so I think this is a good call. Bring in Garcia, get the momentum back on the blue side. Rachel Garcia picking up her eighth win, and yesterday was fantastic. Pac-12 pitcher of the week after a no-hitter, just shutting down Washington, Natasha. Yeah, absolutely. She was lights out last night. And what she did so well is obviously controlling her changeup and, and getting those in, in certain important moments. But what she did so great was in the beginning of counts, she was going right at hitters. She did not go pitch around any of these Husky hitters. So yesterday, Gabby Plain went for Washington, Garcia for UCLA. Garcia went the distance, 105 pitches. Plain bounced in the fourth inning, atypical to say the least. And the three walks, the surprise, and Gabby who came in 23 and 0. No other pitcher in the nation had more than 15 wins against zero losses, but pinned with her first loss of the season. So the Bruins handle her with a couple of home runs in the 6-1 win. All right, so we talked about how Washington historically has not done very well at the plate against Garcia. And you probably got to be thinking of you, the Huskies. All right, 
We got Rachel out of the way. Let's see what we can do now. And here we are again, <laughs> second and inning. Garcia's back in. <laughs> and she's back. <laughs> All right, so Faramo, the early hook. And yeah, the high stakes in this series, ladies and gentlemen. And first pitch from Garcia, strike. Now, it's interesting, too, because, you know, Garcia's been around. She's an Olympian, and she's all everything, as we documented yesterday. But that's got to be an interesting mindset. I mean, you, with the way Faramo's been pitching, you don't think that you're going to be called on, if at all, this early in a contest. Yeah, and definitely, I'm sure she has all the confidence, Faramo. But being an elite athlete and being professional, I'm sure Garcia is preparing to know that she may have to come off the bench. And I think it's also good preparation for her to start to have that mindset, especially going into the Olympics as well. At any moment, you can be called on. And so her being a professional, I know that she has all the confidence in Faramo, but is always ready to be called on. And silent rain Espinosa is dispensed of in three pitches. The first big out. And Rachel just going with that screwball in the outside corner, and that's just a tough, tough pitch. Garcia, 85 strikeouts against only 11 walks now this season. Her strikeout to walk ratio, almost eight strikeouts for every walk, is 14th nationally. All right, here's Jalen Alchin. 0 for 3 yesterday, hitting 313. The runners at the corner. We called upon Garcia again. Not only that early in this contest, but with runners at the corners and nobody out. Now one out with the left-handed hitting Olchin and then Bates to follow. Swing and a miss. One and one Olchin, Southern California native from Huntington Beach, California. And this is a backdoor curve on the outside corner. And it looks like she's go doing a little bit different than yesterday. Yesterday she was attacking the hitters more inside, and it looks like she's staying a little bit more away on these hitters today. You see how they're playing in at the corners. Swing and a miss. One and two. Garcia, the fifth-year senior from Palmdale, California. Mentioned the Olympian coming off the Pac-12 Pitcher of the Week performance against Oregon State. Back at UCLA after being with Team USA in 2020. This one swung on and just tapping it foul. The all chin stays alive for Washington, already leading two to one and trying to get as many as they can because the Bruins just can't, no lead is safe against UCLA. Just one unearned run allowed yesterday by Rachel Garcia in that complete game performance. This one's lined up the middle and a nice hit. Two outs again. All three runs have come with two outs for Washington here today. Ulchin the latest, driving in her 30th run of the season. This is a great piece of hitting by Alchin, just being able to send this ball on the outside corner right back up the middle. That's what you call a perfect piece of hitting. Anything we call a UTM up the middle, that's when you know you're hitting the ball spot on. It's now first and second, one out for Bates, who grounded out to shortstop. Hitting 432 coming into this one. He's got Lynch at second, Olchin at first. And Garcia and the Bruins trying to plug the hole right now. Pitch outside. Bates from Ceres, California, up north. But played her final three years with Firecrackers Rico in Huntington Beach. That was a commute for the Leafs. In on the hands, this one's popped foul and grabbing at Espinoza. And now two outs. And now they just have to get Klingler to get out of the inning. No easy feat right there. And this is definitely the heart hmm. of the Huskies lineup. And so key hitters for the Huskies and Klingler. She is so, so effective and she's pretty consistent at the plate. Thirteen homers, 41 batted in behind only Maddie Hackbarth of Arizona State in the Pac-12. Checks the swing, but it was a strike nonetheless as Brandon Blum. 0-1 the count. 
UCLA and Washington top five matchup. The Huskies at number four, the Bruins at number two. If you're just joining us, well, Garcia did not get the start, but called on early to replace Faremo here today in the second inning with Washington already plating three. Rachel making her 13th appearance on the season. An ERA of 0.40. And opponents hitting 125 against her. As we said about early on in this one, Washington, since Garcia started her career after the redshirt year in 2016, hitting 100 points lower against Garcia than they are against the rest of the Bruins pitchers. That is just a testament to how great Garcia is and just to be able to shut down their offense. And their offense is not shabby, as you can say. This one's fouled back to the screen, so two and two the count. Huskies with runners at first and second. And Garcia trying to end the inning without any further damage. They scored two in the first on the two-run home run by Flores. And they have a run in after Husky single. And that's a strikeout looking. Klingler goes down on strikes. Steadying the ship, Rachel Garcia, but the Huskies add another run on a two-out hit by Jadlin Alchin. Three to one Huskies. Bottom of the second next. You'd never want leftover onion residue or any food residue on any of your surfaces. But that's what you could be doing if you're cleaning with a used dishcloth, even after you've rinsed it. So switch to a fresh sheet of Bounty for a more hygienic clean. Unlike used dishcloths that can carry and redistribute residue, Bounty keeps your surfaces cleaner because better hygiene begins with Bounty. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Most among all FBS running backs, it is clear that he is truly a dynamic offensive threat. And with the growing trend in the NFL of having players who can play both running back and wide receiver, Felton will have many suitors in the league. He may not be a blazer in the 40, but his game speed proves to be true every time you turn on the film. And it also turned heads at the Senior Bowl when he was playing wide receiver. Keep an eye on this Bruin in the draft, as wherever he ends up, he will have the opportunity to make an impact. Washington on top of UCLA, 3-1. to one. A look at the 15th year head coach, Kelly Inouye Perez, 651st victory. She winning her 600th game in the title clincher against Oklahoma in 2019. And now her team facing a little bit of adversity here, Natasha. Absolutely, but this is what you prepare for. And I know that Coach Inouye, she is very detail-oriented. So definitely preparing this team for all scenarios, whether you're coming from behind, uh, if you're ahead, and so that's what makes Coach I so great is the her ability to to prepare her team for any situation. Yeah, she's been a part of eight national championships. She won three as a player, three as an assistant coach, and now two as a head coach. UCLA with 12 national championships leading the land in that department. All right, so we have Brady, Garcia, and Malaulu this inning. Bruins trailing now three to one. And Gabby playing back to the circle, and here we go. And taking a ball is Brady, 1-0. She was 0 for 3, a quiet night for Maya. The redshirt freshman from Thousand Oaks, California, with the, uh, the famous uncle. A pretty athletic family, but Maya's done some pretty good things on her own end. Softball America freshman of the year in 2020. Seven home runs last season. Has six already this year. Swing and a miss. And the thing that's amazing about Brady is just her effortless power. She's just got this grace and this, you know, sometimes when you're seeing people hit for power, they're grinding through it, but she just has this way of making it look really, really hmm. simple and very, very easy. Playing back 
the circle, showing bunt and taking inside. Yamaya kind of starting out in Southern California, then moving to Bakersfield. Actually started in Northern California, moved to Southern California, then went back to Bakersfield as her mom's work, and then went back to Oaks Christian. She felt more at home there. She had home runs in four of her first five games for UCLA and hitting her first eight. Talk about coming on, onto campus without any kind of trepidation. Absolutely, and that COVID year, I think, especially for Amaya Brady, was very important for her to have under her belt. It's almost as if she got a test trial of her hmm. freshman season. Uh, so definitely gives her much more experience coming into this season, which is her true freshman season. Well, it's going to be interesting in a few years out for all the freshmen in the land because they will have had five years under the right, belt. Right. Man, I got cheated. <laughs> <laughs> This one's laced right field, and it is foul. Got a hold of that pitch. It looked like it was a hanger there. Two and two. That was a pitch probably Plain wanted to have back. Checking it out again here, Natasha. This one is up in the zone. It looks like she just gets her bat head out in front of her. Inside pitch, you want to make sure timing-wise you're a little bit early, and she just unleashes that bat barrel. Just a tad bit too early. She said her uncle Tom Brady said she's the best athlete of the Brady family. I mean, she played softball, volleyball, golf, the gymnastics track in her youth. This time takes strike three, though. And she is retired. That is the second time this weekend she has struck out 0 for 4 against Washington so far. This pitch is just dirty. This is a drop on the inside corner, and that's just a really, really tough pitch. Anything that's breaking hard and down and in to any hitter, that's just a hard pitch to get your bat barrel down there and, and, and get it. And yeah, when you talk to Heather Tarn, she brings up names like Danielle Laurie in comparisons. Definitely playing totally reminds me of Daniel Laurie. I had the pleasure of playing with Daniel Laurie on the Utrecht Say Pride, and just in terms of presence and competitiveness, they really, really uh, model each other and, and kind of remind me of each other for sure. Danielle, a member of that 2009 national championship team, but also represented in the Olympics for Canada in 08. All right, so here comes Alyssa Garcia, seven game hit streak. Seven game on day street, 340 average. Three homers and 11 runs batted in. And check swing chopped at the plate, one and one. Alyssa, redshirt freshman from Chula Vista, California. This is something that we were talking about with regards to 2020 and having an extra glut of players, the incoming class and also the players that have been held over. You have to make those decisions kind of like what uh, Heather Tarr had to do with Taryn Atley. Right. Is what do you do with some of the seniors who have been the starters, but the freshmen who are coming in who have kind of earned by merit that playing time. I, I couldn't even imagine being a, a head coach during these last two years, but definitely trying to manage expectations. If you are someone like a Taryn Atley, you're like, okay, I, I get that extra year and I'm gonna come back and, oh, there's a whole bunch of freshmen that are here hmm. too. And so uh, you've got a bunch of freshmen that are fighting to play and excited to play with these seniors. But hey, I want to play too. And so trying to manage those expectations and playing time, that's that's tough. Back to the circle, Plain, outside and low. And we've already been told that Gabby Plain for sure will be back next year. Ostensibly as an Olympian, have to be confirmed in June, however. But with the season she's had and as well as she's played internationally for Australia. A pretty good bet that she'll be in Tokyo in a few months. Definitely, and I will say, Danny, that we are international stars. I got a text yesterday <laughs> from some of her Australian teammates who were tuning into the game yesterday and trying to cheer on Gabby and, and, and pump her up a little bit. So I definitely think that she has a great shot, and just knowing the assets that she'll bring to that Australian team, I think, I think she has a bright, bright future for her. A softball, big business in Australia, certainly, along with the Team USA. Australia's the only other nation of medal in all the Olympics in which softball's been competed. This one's fouled up, but it's nice to see softball back in the Olympics. The last time it was 
on the Olympic program was 2008. And now finally back on the docket. Yes, and especially in Japan. In Japan, they have such a love affair for baseball and softball. And just to have that opportunity to have the game back at the highest level, um, I mean, it, there's, there's no greater feeling than playing in the Olympics. And so it's going to be nice to see um, the playing field. I think it's going to be super competitive. And Garcia lines this one, grounds this one down the left field line into the left field corner, and she makes it to second base. Nicely done. An extra base hit for Garcia to extend her hitting streak to eight games and bring up Tessa Malahulu. And that's a nice job by Garcia. Right off the bat, you know that's through the infield. And as a hitter, whenever you hit that ball to the green, you should always be thinking two until the defense tells you no. And so great job by Garcia by getting those two bags. Alyssa, that's her third double of the season. Now it's Malaulu and perhaps Gooden to try and bring her in as a meeting at the circle with Lance Glasso, Gabby Plain and company. He's going over some things. Yeah, he's going over some stuff, and I think that it's been nice to see them work together. I think they, uh, Coach Glasgow, between Gabby and Flores, he puts a lot of confidence in them, but he's calling the game and making sure that they're all on the same page. I think it's just really nice when you have a coach who you can check in with and who wants to be on the same page with you. It's not his way or the highway, um, but making sure that we are all on the same page and that we can uh, move this thing forward. Yeah, Gabby's only, uh, she has another year coming up, officially a senior, but as mentioned, the eligibility carrying over. She started off all Pac-12 first team, all American, first ever in Washington history, 100 innings pitch plus and allowing under 100 hits. Fastest to 50 wins. She did it in only 74 games. Now, sitting at 79 wins, showing bunt, taking a ball is Tessa Malaulu. Yes, and Gabby playing over the fall was staying back at home, you know, because of COVID, but had the opportunity to train and obviously had some opportunities to stay and, and train with the Team Australia. But Coach Qatar since said since she's been back that she's just been this calm and confident and just has this great, great presence that's super uh, um, kind of like a leader on the team. Pitch low and away. Yeah, she was spending a lot of time training with Team Australia in 2020. So when you look at the numbers and you look at the disconnect from this year to last, only 10 and 2 last season. I only say only because she was 24 and 2 in 2019 and 22 and 5 in 2018. Another meeting at the mound. Home plate umpire Brandon Blum going to break it up to try and speed this one along. Washington leading 3 to 1. And this one playing out more like a chess match compared to what we saw yesterday. Yeah, I definitely think that both offenses have woke up. <laughs> and so I think we're going to see a little bit more offense today for sure on both sides. So it's, it's definitely going to be kind of a, a seesaw going back and forth. These are the top two hitting teams in the conference. UCLA at 338 entering the day. Washington at 331. Huskies doing a lot of damage. All three runs with two outs. Runner at second for the Bruins. Garcia, 2-0 the count. So now make it 3-0 as playing. And struggling with the control here again. This is the ninth start of the season for Malawulu, as we talk about with Brady as the freshman, but true uh, last year, true freshman, 423. Or last high school year, I should say. And she'll take a four pitch walk. So she goes to first, Garcia still at second. And so Malaulu at first base, and Gooden will step aside, but she won't even get in at bat here. And coming in to hit is Julie Rodriguez, so they're going to bring in a left-hander to hit for Gooden. And Coach Inouye loves to call on Julie Rodriguez in these situations to pinch hit. Uh, she's got great pop, great power. She's a senior. And definitely, she comes off the bench and, and embraces her role and knows that she's got this one at bat. Three for 11 this season. But this would be a good spot for her playing the matchup. 
against the right-hand throwing plane. She's got Garcia at second base. Malaulu on the walk over at first. And again, Plane having a tough time finding the strike zone. Yes, and that's going to be key for Plane for the rest of the weekend is just maintaining her game, getting ahead of these hitters, um, and, and falling behind in counts. That's going to get her in tr some trouble facing this Bruin lineup. Rodriguez is senior from Norwood, New Jersey. Takes a strike. Last season, and a lot of pinch hitting rolls, 333. And this is a backdoor curve on the outside corner, and that's just so deceptive because you have a lot of planes pitches staying down. She breaks a lot of pitches, her drop ball down, and that backdoor, you think it's gonna fall off, and it just kind of hovers and stays on that outside corner. This one's fouled back to the screen. Count one and two. Julie was the Gatorade Player of the Year for the state of New Jersey in 2017. Hit 644 at Northern Valley Old Tappan High School. Now coming on for Gooden here with runners at first and second. And an important spot early on in this contest against Gabby Plain. It's taken just outside. Count two and two, and you can see already 42 pitches for Gabby Plain. This one's grinded right up the middle. Plane goes the short way to third. Espinoza fakes the throw, but the fielder's choice going 1-5. And that is the second out of the inning. It'll bring up Kinsley Washington. Great heads up play by Plane. Just getting the lead out, doing what you got to do. Keep yourself in this game. Good awareness there to get the lead runner. So it'll keep it first and second. And Gooden will come out of the dugout and replace Rodriguez on the base pass, presumably to stay in the contest as well. So with two outs, Garcia erased on the base pass. Malolu now at second, and Gooden over at first base, and another meeting behind the circle for Washington. And Washington coming in. And in the bullpen. So Huskies yesterday went to Pat Moore. We've got Sarah Willis warming up out there. And pitch low and away and falling behind again. Playing usually you could set your watch to a Gabby Plain start, but for second straight day, Natasha, Washington warming up the bullpen early in a Gabby Plain start. Yes, it's just very uncharacteristic of her to get behind and struggling to find that strike zone. And um, usually her movement, her movements is, is what's deceptive and these UCLA hitters aren't really biting at much of her pitches. This one hit into right field, gets down, rounding second, coming home, Malaulu slides and just gets in time and going to second base on the hit is Washington. Good heads up base running again from the Bruins. <laughs> This is a great piece of clutch hitting by Kinsley Washington and just great base running by Malaulu from scoring from first base. She is on the, on the run. You see Malaulu just getting in there before the tag by Flores. Yeah, she's pumped and the Bruins trying to work their way back here early, 3-2. Now a great spot for Brianna Perez, who delivered yesterday, has two runners in scoring position, walked and scored in the first inning. First pitch swinging, it's just foul. That would have given the Bruins a lead. And you 
just have to love Brie Perez's aggressiveness. Just last night, she comes up with runners in scoring position and swings at the first pitch aggressively. Same thing tonight, not changing her game plan. She's getting in there and being aggressive. And a few years ago, 70 runs for UCLA, second in a single season all time. Someone named Natasha Watley has that record, 75, 2001. Oh, Natasha, that's you. <laughs> one and one. Mm -hmm. Among many records that you hold here. Now, all right, so the Bruins, a base hit away from taking the lead. And Gabby Plain still working here in the bottom of the second, having thrown 47 pitches for Washington. and struggling to find consistency in the strike zone. Back to the circle, comes playing. And that one's foul tipped, staying alive. They're two and two. Perez yesterday providing the power, Natasha, with the three-run home run. Yes, and this pitch came up and in. And again, Perez's aggressiveness was the difference. And I just love her reaction and just knowing that that ball is out and that that sets the tone for this offense. And she's already outstripped her home run total from all of 2019 when she was a first-team All-American, All-Pac-12 first team. She scored those 70 runs, had seven home runs that season. So far has eight. And takes strike three there. So Gabby Plain exits the second inning, still with Washington in the lead. But the Bruins get another run in, and it's 3-2 Huskies. Running three miles made me realize I really need to quit vaping. That's so great. I'm so proud of you. <sighs> running just makes me realize I hate running. Jake says someone stole my vape tonight, and I'm going to take that as a sign to quit vaping. And Jake, you know, it's funny you said that because I have been seeing a lot of signs, too. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Hmm. Good job. It takes to lead. It's who we are, what we stand for, and what we've always done. That's why we proudly celebrate the female student athlete, the national titles, the Olympic medals, the achievements of every day, because the strength and the power that are women's sports continues to be elevated by this conference. The Pac-12, the conference of champions. My name's Kelly Inouye Perez, head softball coach at UCLA, and you're watching Pac-12 LA. Welcome back to Easton Stadium. Danny Lee, Natasha Watley with you. Yeah, it's been back and forth so far today. Every inning has seen something happen, and Washington just hanging on to that 3-2 lead, but you figured this is how the game's gonna play out, Natasha. Absolutely, I, like I said, the offenses and the bats have come alive. Um, everybody's settled in, everybody's a little bit comfortable. Those little jitters, those first state jitters are out. Everybody's digging in, taking their hacks, and so I think we're gonna see, uh, continue to see a lot more offense. And the Bruins have made a lot of moves so far today. Already a pitching change. We've seen a pinch hitting spot even before Gooden had an at bat. And now you've seen another change with uh, Aaliyah Jordan now going to the DP spot. And we see Curro back in there in right field. So she's in the flex position, will not hit. So Seneca Curro, who started in right field yesterday, now out there in right field today for UCLA. And at the plate, Sammy Reynolds, who singled and scored in the Husky first inning, which they scored two early against Megan Faremo, who did not make it out of the second inning. This one fouled off at the left side. Faremo's numbers today, one plus inning, three runs, three earned, three hits, and a strikeout. And I just love watching Sammy Reynolds take her hacks. I mean, we talked about it yesterday and her being 5'4", but she does not get cheated on her swings. 
now facing an 0-2 count. And she didn't wait long in her freshman campaign a couple of years ago when she became the first UW freshman since their national championship season to hit a home run in the Women's College World Series on phase and also just the fourth freshman in Seattle in the last 15 years with at least 40 runs batted in. Got a 39 game on base streak that year too. Swings and misses and goes down. So what has Garcia done? Well, she came in and has already struck out three. And that'll bring on Morgan Flores with the two run home run off the scoreboard and left to give the Huskies the initial lead. Now with nine home runs on the season, trying to become just the third Husky player with double digit home runs. And we were told yeah, this is not something that Washington normally expects that happen. A lot of home run numbers. Taking a strike, but this year a concerted effort working on those pitches. We talked about the plate discipline for Washington, fifth in the nation walks, and not getting cheated with the number of pitches they've seen. And coming into the weekend, six players in the Pac-12 with at least four home runs in Pac-12 play, three of them. Klingler, Flores, Reynolds play for Washington. One and one the count. Garcia again, up and in this time, two and one. The native of Palmdale, as we mentioned. Came to UCLA in 2016, but in the southern section, CIF, the intercollegiate body, the national championship game, intercollegiate body for California, tore an ACL. In fact, actually, she tore ACL, but actually still played until she finally collapsed in that national championship game, three and one. You talk about a gamer. Boy, to pitch through that kind of pain. Yeah, I think when you think of Gamer, I think Rachel Garcia's picture is right there hmm. in the dictionary right next to it. And she is the ultimate gamer in terms of the adversity she has faced. You talk about her tearing her ACL her freshman season and um, just even this past season at the beginning, uh, pulling her hamstring and just still, she's so calm and you'll never know that she's had any of this adversity. This one's a little blooper to first base and hit Washington, rolls foul. And it's a foul ball because it did not reach the bag before it went foul. So it will just result in a foul ball and the count remains full. And actually didn't even touch Washington. Yeah, I was gonna say the argument might be if she touched it, but definitely she did not um, touch it. So back into the box goes Flores. Catcher for Washington from Cypress, California, went to modern day high. Johnny Bench Award is the top softball catcher last year. NCAA just fouls it off. And Flores is your super, super senior. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And this is uh, such a great swing in that first inning of her just being able to sit back on that changeup. And, and that just shows her, her experience, her seniorship, just to be able to be patient and, and sit back on that. But when you think about Flores, you just think about someone who just leads. And Coach Tar talked about Coach Flores being one of the leaders, but she's kind of a quiet leader. And when she actually speaks and says something, it's kind of weighs about a thousand pounds hmm. because it's weighted so heavily because it means so much because she said something. This one's golf to center field. Brady got a bad jump on it, reaches up and can't handle it. And it's on the warning track and heading into second base is Flores with the double. Another great piece of hitting by Flores, hitting that right back up the middle. But I definitely think that this is a catchable ball. This is just a little misread on Brady's part. I think she wanted to kind of float back, but on those balls, you, as an outfielder, you want to make sure that you're sprinting hard back. And if anything, let the ball dictate if you need to come back in. Yeah, and this time of day right now, there's some sun, some shade out in center field, so it's tough 
to judge it right now. Nevertheless, the second extra base hit right in this game for Flores. It'll bring up Noel He with one out. And Megan Vandergriff will pinch run for Flores out there. You can see how the coaches are just positioning their pieces with the pinch runner here, presumably Flores, to replace her in the bottom half of this inning. But each run, they know Washington wants this one. And Heather Tarr's team knows that that eight-game losing streak to the Bruins looms large and that these games are important in the standings, not only the RPI. The postseason coming up quite fast here. Washington has been to the NCAA 26 times. Every year since the initial season at Washington softball in 93, they've been to the postseason. That pitch runs up and in, and the count is one and one to Noel He, who struck out in the first inning against Faremo, now facing Garcia, who she went 0, and th 0 for 3 against yesterday. He, another Southern California product, senior from Orange, California, Orange Lutheran High School. And takes inside two and one. Garcia, once again, a finalist for the USA Softball College Player of the Year. She won the last two that it was awarded in 2018-2019. Fouled at the plate. In fact, there's actually four players that we're seeing this weekend who are finalists on that 25-player list with Faremo and Garcia for the Bruins and Bates and Plain for Washington. In fact, Assist Bates also on the class award finalist list of 10. Senior who best ex exemplifies excellence in community, class, character, and competition. I think she exemplifies all of those. <laughs> it's a very flattering honor to say the least. Two and two the count. He back in, swinging, this one's chopped up the middle, past Perez into center field, and Brady misplays it, and the run will score. And this is a great piece of hitting by he, but when we talk about the offenses waking up, the thing that's going to be the difference for these teams is defense and, and Brady misplaying this ball. Definitely there's a play at the plate and so those are the small, small things that you want to make sure that you're taking care of the ball on defense. Washington re-establishing a 4-2 lead. Now Heather Tarr leaving her position over at the third base coach's box because we have another pinch runner. He coming out and coming on for her. That's Livy Sheely, who came in late last night in left field. So Sheely now over at first base. And by the way, in case you're wondering, it's just ruled a base hit in RBI. They judged the runner to be around third base at the time that Brady couldn't handle the ball. And the Bruins. They got Megan Faramo in the bullpen. That's right, as a starter, you can come back in. And we might be seeing her again here today. And the way that this game is going may not be a bad decision because we still got a lot of innings to play here. And throw down to second base and a stolen base, so that worked out. Sheely comes in and steals second. Sheely, it's her third stolen base. Garcia trying to throw from her knees and, and gets a good throw off, but she just gets right underneath the tag. Well, Washington is the Pac-12 leader in stolen bases. That's number 55. So now they put a runner in scoring position again. And like we were saying earlier, Natasha, there's no lead safe here at Easton Stadium. 
Absolutely. And I mean, just with both of these teams, I mean, with any team that's leading, I, I think at the, it just sits till the fat lady sings until hmm. the last pitch is thrown because these offenses are just so powerful on both sides. Game two of the series after the Bruins took game one last night with Garcia and the complete game six to one. Pitch hits the inside corner against Madison Husky coming in at 305 singled and scored in the second inning. Yeah, the Bruins have won 12 of 14 against Washington, including the last eight. This one's chopped foul by the right hand hitting Madison Husky from Cerritos, California, Gar High School. In fact, actually, Kelly Noy Perez's husband, Gerardo, coaches the baseball team over at Gar High School. So a, lot of, a lot of players on both sides of the diamond who have played with or against one another. Yes, in California, it's definitely a hotbed of softball players. So just you either grew up playing against or with. And so a lot of these players definitely know each other. This is just a great pitch. This is another changeup for Rachel on the outside. Well, Garcia's already struck out four today, working on her second inning in relief. 40 pitches after throwing 105 in the complete game yesterday against Washington. So two outs now. Still with a runner at second. Sheely over at second. And here's Lynch, who reached on an error in the second inning. Lynch from Noonan, Georgia, sophomore, originally committed to Auburn, changed course, and then came to Washington, followed her high school teammate, Lily Agin, who we saw yesterday in right field. Fouled off one and one. Eight home runs last season for Lynch to lead Washington in the 24 games that she started for this year. and actually she'll stop. Yeah, Brady's got a strong arm out there and just saved a run with that throw. And this is a great piece of hitting by Lynch up the middle, hitting it hard. And again, nice job from Brady trying to stop those runs and making sure that she gets that ball back in. Lisa Fernandez, the UCLA pitching coach, coming out to talk to Garcia. And here comes Aaliyah Jordan. And it looks like she'll be on to play right field for Kuro. So Jordan back in the right field. Faremo back in into the pitcher's circle. Holly Acevedo in the UCLA bullpen. And yeah, this is uh, your scorebook starting to look like abstract art at this point. It's only the third inning. Yes, and Megan Paramo coming back in, I think is just a great move. You know, Rachel giving up a couple of hits. Uh, we're gonna, they're gonna need Rachel going back in through the weekend. And so giving Paramo back out there. And I think it'll be a good confidence and character building for Paramo. He got pulled in, in the beginning of the game and you gotta come back in and you gotta tough it out. All right, so Faremo started off and just went into the second inning, gave up three earned, three hits, and struck out one. We'll get a chance to do it again here. And with runners at the corner, she exited the game in that second inning with runners at the corners and nobody out. Now trying to keep that situation as is here in the top of the third with the Huskies once again going up by two runs. And it'll be Silent Rain Espinosa coming up who struck out against Garcia in the second inning after Garcia came on. All right, so what's the mindset now 
for Amo coming back on into the pitching circle and trying now to shut down Washington. Yes, I think coming back in, I think she's going to have to mix speeds a little bit more, be a little bit more unpredictable. Um, Washington lineup definitely is uh, error, erring on being aggressive. She's throwing around the plate, so they're just taking their hacks. And so I think she's going to have to mix a little bit more, keep them off balance, mix more speeds. And her first pitch is in there for a strike. 0 and 1. So you have Sheely over at third base, Lynch over at first. Espinoza, who has already struck out twice this week and at the plate. And the Huskies trying to get another one over at the expense of the Bruins. Brady playing a little toward left center field, down to first, second base, goes the runner and taking off Sheely, and she is thrown out at the plate. And the Huskies run themselves out of the inning there. Good awareness by the Bruins. And the score remains 4-2. to two. So they tried a little trickery on the base pass. And the Bruins able to cut down the Huskies. Bottom of the third, 4-2 Washington. The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape. Love as an action. For 175 years, New York Life has been helping people act on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, we got it right. We did good. Are you ready? Let's get it started. Kind of a dream come true, honestly. I can't see my life without it. That's why that guy's gonna play in the NFL. What? They're going to be the faces of the NFL. You're on that team. You're on that team. Oh, my goodness. He's a different kid. He wants to be great, but you just never know. Welcome to the NFL Draft. Beautiful spring day in Los Angeles. Washington leading UCLA 4-2 in the first of the doubleheader we'll have here on Pac-12 Networks. Washington coming at the fourth ranked team in the nation. UCLA number two and then take note that the second of this doubleheader presumably will not count as a conference game ostensibly should they play tomorrow which we assume to have happened but that is something they've built in here in 2021 playing the doubleheaders on Saturday playing four to make sure that they do get the three conference games. Because as you look at it, UCLA had a lot of cancellations this season. In fact, when you look at the discrepancy, UCLA's played 13 fewer games than Washington. Right, and that's just a great call by the Pac-12 just to kind of put those four games on the weekend just to assure that all the games get played, knowing that a lot of games will get canceled. All right, Gabby playing, going back out to the circle. This has been an interesting game if you are just tuning in. All right. All right. So we're here, Washington leading 4 2. And we have Taryn Atley from the Washington Huskies. Taryn, thank you for joining us. Taryn, uh, how is it for you right now watching this game? This has got to be an interesting one so far. It, it's, it's going well. Um, you know, it's it's a fun day to play some softball and uh, uh, two great teams out here. So um, it's a lot of fun and it's a great day to continue to get better. Taryn, I think we need to switch spots. I heard you want to be in the, in the booth. I do, I do. That's why I hijacked Coach Tar. I locked her in the bathroom, so good job, good I stole job. the interview. Taryn, can you tell us what the what the what the goal was today coming into today after yesterday for the um, team? You know, it's just all about getting better. And I think yesterday was an awesome game, and we both competed and put our hearts on the line. Um, and we wanted to do the same thing today. You know, this is a great team, but to be able to compete and get better every day, and that's what we wanted to ultimately do today. And, and Taryn, I'm going to harp a little bit more on those sports casting aspirations because <laughs> you, you had a personal vlog. Uh, you had yeah. videos you made at timeout with Tad.
Pat, I mm -hmm. think they were called, and you've pa interned at the Pac-12 Networks. Yep, you bet. So let's hear your expert analysis so far of this contest. <laughs> um, I just think we have, you know, two elite teams going at it, and it's a lot of fun. Obviously, Gabby's just, she's wanting me to hurry hurry up. Um, I'm, I'm in the spotlight. I'm taking it away from her. But um, I just think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see how it ends. So, Thank you so much. Well, by the way, well done, Taryn. And, you know, I, I could use a break. If you want to come up here, you can switch spots with me. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Good job. Take care. All right, Taryn Atley for the Washington Huskies. And Taryn has been a fixture for Washington. But as we talked about with the, the extra depth that the Huskies have had, that it, that's just part of moving around the pieces that you have to do as a head coach now across the land. Absolutely, and that's just tough. That's a tough call because Coach Tarr says that Atley is one of the leaders on this team, and, and now she's embraced her role by leading in the dugout, and that's just not always an easy role to, to play, but I think that it just speaks volumes to the type of person that Atley is. Yeah, she was a National Freshman of the Year finalist and a Rutgers transfer and an old Big Ten player at one point in her career. Strike one issued to Aaliyah Jordan, who's back out into the field and at the plate had that huge home run last night. Singled in a run in the first inning for the Bruins, 4-2. This one's grounded foul right side, 0-2 oh, the count. Gabby Plain coming into the weekend, the nation leader in wins, strikeouts, dealt her first loss of the season yesterday as she pitched into the fourth inning but did not complete it, her shortest start since uh, February 2020. And Aaliyah Jordan, oh yeah, Pat Moore, wow, that ball's still traveling. I wonder if anybody retrieved it off sunset today. <laughs> And this one's hit the other way, and that's just foul. Yeah, can you imagine that, telling your insurance company that? <laughs> There's a softball embedded in my windshield. <laughs> Does my policy cover that? <laughs> can you take a picture of that? <laughs> 53 pitches for Gabby Plain starting here in the third inning. She threw about 60 yesterday. Pitch outside, one and two. Leah Gar uh, Jordan, 5'7", redshirt junior. First team All-American last year. The Pac-12 Freshman of the Year a few years ago. Her sister Kayla played softball at San Diego State. And she's a psychology major with a minor in political science. Pitch inside, two and two. I, I notice a lot of softball players have that psychology major. <laughs> Is it like a, 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 a mental game? They want to get into the mind games? Um, yes, we can go with that. We can, <laughs> well, let's go with that. I think we should go with that. Um, but definitely, I mean, yeah, especially at UCLA, I mean, what an academic institution. Yes. So um, psychology, sociology, but those are, you know, you kind of want something that can be not so, um, I don't know, I guess, I think something that kind of entails a lot of things. So sociology, psychology can help you with all the things. This one's lined to left field, but a nice play by Reynolds to deny Jordan the hit. I know he threw so sociology and you were a sociologist. <laughs> I had to throw my major in there. <laughs> And it, yeah, sometimes we would joke, yeah, actually my major is softball, <laughs> but you know, it all works. It's all in the North Campus realm, right? First out recorded, and now we're going to have uh, another pinch hitter. Genevieve Perez will come on for Rachel Garcia. Perez came on yesterday for the Bruins and struck out in the fourth inning against Pat Moore. There's Genevieve Perez, fifth year senior from Garden Grove, was a second team All-American at San Diego State, transferred to UCLA, hit 345 for the Bruins with four home runs last year, one of five so far this season. Takes a pitch outside, 0-1. Bruins coming in, first place in the Pac-12, 9-1, 26-2 overall. Washington at 34-7 overall, 12-3 in the conference. 
but among all Pac-12 teams, UCLA has played the fewest games. Strike 0 and 2 now the count. UCLA not too much left to play in the season. They're at Utah next week in the home series here against Stanford, and then they're at Arizona, which is always the rival series. That's it as far as the conference season goes. This one's fouled off to the right. And I like this call of having Genevieve Perez come in in this moment, and, you know, she's hitting in Garcia's spot. But I think at this moment, Garcia, sit down, take a rest. We're going to need you for uh, the rest of the weekend. And I, I, I love the way that Perez, her presence at the plate, she is does a great job of coming off the bench, embracing that pinch hitting role. Perez takes low and away, and that evens the count at two and two. Delaney Wiz batting behind her. Garcia in the first inning grounded out, so now here's Perez in her stead. But a lot of moves being made. Sorry, the second pinch hitting spots coming by Perez, and we're just in the third inning. Taking strike three is Perez, so she goes down for the second out. And looking for a rare one, two, three inning here. Is Gabby playing? Bring up Delaney Wiz, 5'6 from Orcutt, California up north. Five home runs for the Bruins last year, 359 average this year, hitting over 300, seven homers. This one's grounded left side. Nice piece of hitting into left field for the base hit. That's a great piece of hitting by Wise, and just to be able to just to come in again as the offense, just you got to be aggressive. And I love that first pitch swing in and, and taking that in that 5 6 hole. And getting another two out hit. We've seen so many of those for both teams this contest. And that'll bring up Maya Brady. Had a tough go of it in the top half of this inning in center field, but then as she swings and misses, made the throw that held the runner at third base, which is eventually cut down on the stolen base try to keep it 4-2. Certainly important series, but still enjoying it, and that's the most important thing out there in the UCLA dugout. Swing and a miss. Brady falling behind 0-2. Having a tough time of it at the plate so far this weekend. Yes, and starting at the, in, the beginning of season, she struggled a little bit and then started to come into her own um, in the middle of season. But again, I mean, we're facing Plain, and uh, we got to continue to give some credit to Plain. Those mm -hmm. pitches are breaking, and, and, and it's tough. You can't, you can't hit what you can't see, and um, she's really moving that ball today. Pitch high and away, one and two. Senior Gabby Plain from Harrington Park, Australia, New South Wales. Mentioned leading the nation a ton of categories, including wins and strikeouts. Looking for her first win as a starter here against UCLA. Chop foul at the plates, one and two. And what makes playing so great is how deceptive she is. She's got great control of her pitches, she's got great command. Whenever she's trying to spot a pitch, she hits that location. If it's down and out, it's, it's, if it's off the plate, she does a great good job of commanding and taking good control of her pitches. Got Wiz over there at first base and a one and two count to Brady. This one, a little flare to short and it's easy money for Bates. All right, the Bruins get a base hit, but they leave Wiz and we head to the fourth, four to Washington. When you're building a business, it's easy to find a bank who says all the right things. They'll say they have the products and services you need and blah, blah, blah. 
they go on and on saying they'll blah blah this and blah blah that. But when it comes time to actually expanding your business, well that's when you need Pacific Premier Bank. We're completely dedicated to supporting our clients' growth. And that's no blah blah blah. Pacific Premier Bank, where business meets opportunity. Gatorade Zero. All the electrolytes. Zero sugar. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Anything you can be, I can be greater. Uh, sooner or later, I'm greater than you. Yeah. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. Hey. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. Get more out of Zero. Now available with protein. Taking a look at other action in the Pac-12. Stanford upset Oregon in that Friday night contest 3-1, but Oregon came back with a flurry in the third inning today to beat Stanford 7-4. And Arizona, wow, they uh, outscored Utah going into that doubleheader 26-1. Now you add it all told 30-3 in the first two-plus games. Palacios with the grand slam. Nine runs for the third inning has been the big inning, I guess is the theme for the rest of the league as Arizona trying to right the ship. They got swept in the three conference games against Arizona State last week. And that was something a note because the Sun Devils hadn't done that since 2012. But Mike Candrea, yeah, his squad, eight national champions, but they've not won a national title since 2007, which would qualify as a pretty big drought for the Wildcats. First pitch swinging and missing. That's Espinoza, she, Olchin, and Bates. The hitters this inning for Washington have led throughout, scored two in the first, one in the second, one in the third. UCLA's half of the third was the first time today that neither uh, team had come up with a run. She had a foul back to the screen. Espinoza, this is the first time she's facing Foremo. Now, Foremo started this one, left in the second inning. Garcia came in. She struck out Espinoza as the first hitter. And Foremo came right back in there last inning. Fouled off. Espinoza was left standing there on the caught stealing to end the third inning. One's laced a short, nice diving play for Washington for the first out. And I'll bring up Jalen Olchin. So Washington had a tough time of it earlier in this contest. We talked about, and we've talked about it throughout uh, the weekend. You see Washington making the, the stop there. Uh, Natasha, so many players for UCLA playing all around. Washington uh, now playing over on the right side of the diamond. And she's over at second base. She's played at first base. Wiz played at third, now at first. Maya Brady coming into the program was an infielder. She's an outfielder. And so many people playing those different roles, and that's something you're going to see is on the left side. First pitch swinging popped out, and Mamaulu makes the play. And this is a super tough play, but great, great call off by Malu Ulu by calling off Garcia because she takes priority in this play and that's just what a third baseman should do. She's got a better vision um, for a catcher. She's got to turn around to get that play and so great, great call off by Malu Ulu. Two outs, neither of which leave the infield and it'll bring up Bates just the way the Bruins like it with nobody on, 1-0. Bates grounding out to short and fouling out in this game. UCLA trying to keep Washington off the board for the first time this afternoon. And Foremo deals high and wide. Six foot redshirt sophomore from Vista, California. First ever club team, Team Watley. Yes. Sponsored you by none other but <laughs> Natasha Watley. You know it. We claim Foremo for sure. <laughs> Takes a strike two and one. 
You got to see her early on uh, in her career. And to have the chance to see her now to come to this point, that's got to be something. I will tell you something. I feel like she was always this height. So at 10 and under, <laughs> she's been the same height. And so imagine all the other 10-year-olds and her just towering over them. Foul back to the screen. Uh, she comes from an athletic background. Her brother, Matthew, it's got to be an interesting conversation in the household because he played volleyball at USC. And there's no love lost between those two programs. Swing and a line drive just beyond the leaping catch try from Washington. Fielding at Jordan, but on her way to second is Bates. So she gets the double and another two out hit for the Huskies, which is what has been the story of this contest. A great piece of hitting by Sis Bates. And right off the bat, she does not even hesitate to see if that's going through. She is thinking to until the defense tells her not. And so many tools in her, her uh, repertoire. We talked about her defense, her offense, savvy, all around, and just reading that ball very well. She just is such a savvy player. She's so smart, too. And I think, you know, a lot of times you talk about athletes who are athletic and um, they possess the speed and the power, but she's so smart. This one's lofted to right field. Over to Adam Jordan, out of this park, and a two-run home run for Klingler, and Washington now up six to two. Well, we mentioned uh, about the Washington power, 14th home run of the year for Klingler, and they're showing the power here today, Natasha. Yes, and definitely you, you know you have power when you are going oppo, and that is just a lovely piece of hitting right there. Inside outing that, going right side, taking that deep, showcasing her power for sure. Klingler with their team high 14th home run, team high RBI 42 and 43, both number two in the conference coming in. And the Huskies have their largest lead of the day, 6-2, and oh yeah, they've done it again with two outs. Five of the six runs today scored with two outs against the Bruins. It's a little demoralizing when you see a team score that much with two outs. After yesterday, the Bruins, they shut them down. They were 0 for 7 with two outs, and today just a completely different situation. Yeah, and I, I think it's a testament to their feistiness. I think that they're not dying. <laughs> you know, even with two outs, they feel that they have a chance, and I think that that's proving to be the difference so far. So Faremo charged with five earned runs here today after a start in which she allowed only one hit against Oregon State and career-high 17 strikeouts last week. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. And keep in mind, you know, Faremo came in ninth in the nation in earned run average. She and Garcia, top two in the league in ERA. Her earned run average coming in 0 0.86, but she's allowed five earned runs. She had allowed a total of only nine earned runs in her previous 15 appearances this season. A percussive thud as that ball <laughs> goes over the screen. Here's Reynolds. She did a lot of damage hitting it over the wall against Oregon last week en route to the Pac-12 Player of the Week nod. Has scored two runs, had a two-run home, uh, or uh, excuse me, has one run, had a single and a scored run in the opening frame. Now hits this one into the gap in left field, and she's on her way, digging for second base. Here comes the throw. Washington keeps it from going awry, and another two-out hit for the Huskies. So after the first two were retired, double from Bates, two-run home run from Klingler, and a double from Reynolds, and another heads-up play, Natasha. Right, and same as this Bates, Sammy Reynolds knows right off the bat that that's two bases, and I love how they're just coming out of the box like, that's two bases. I'm, that's two bases until the defense tells me not. Hmm. Six doubles this year for Sammy. And it's the 10th hit of the contest for Washington. Only in the fourth inning. 
The two outs, six runs, ten hits. Yeah, Faramo feeling the heat, unlike not too many starts we've seen from her this season, or for that matter, in her career. And the Bruins trailing by four runs now with Flores coming up to bat. Flores had the two-run home run, scoring in the first inning, doubling and scoring in the third inning. Flores now third in Washington history in RBI passing Michelle Church. It just needs one more home run to tie third place, Ali Aguilar. First pitch swing in here, skies it out to right field. Jordan there, and the inning comes to an end, but not before the Huskies score two more on the Klingler home run. Bailey Klingler hitting it to right field, and the Huskies increasing their lead to six to two as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Introducing the 2021 Ram 1500, Motor Trend's Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. The exterior features class-exclusive multifunction tailgate and Ram box, while the interior keeps you connected with luxury. From Ram's new Eco Diesel to the 702 horsepower Hemi engine, experience power with efficiency. Claim your offer now during Ram Truck Month and see why Ram is America's most loyal truck brand. This thing's about to get really, really good. Klingler, her first full season with the Washington Huskies. As she played last year for Washington, but obviously, as you know, foreshortened. She had five home runs then. This year, Texas A&M transfer 14 home runs and 43 RBIs, the second two-run home run that we've seen here today from Washington. And this looking more like the Husky offense that we were kind of promised coming into the weekend. Absolutely. I, I think that they have settled in beyond, and this is definitely what we had anticipated. And just Klingler, I mean, I just think just being able to capitalize on that home run in, in that moment really sets the tone and, and continues to keep the momentum on the Husky side. And Gabby Plain, after looking a little rocky the first couple of innings, a couple of walks that were cashed in for runs, she's settled down a little bit. Two runs, four hits against her. And the Bruins now trailing by their largest margin of the day is Alyssa Garcia, who doubled, but was later taken off the base pass on a fielder's choice, steps in. And first pitch swinging out to left center field. And this one will split the gap again. Garcia hesitated and then comes back to first, but that was dropped by Ulch, and she might have had a shot at second. I think she might have been in there safe, but great, great swing. Yeah, you see it splits the gap there, and then Ulchin picks it up, hesitates, and Garcia went back to first. And it looks like we might be seeing more changes here. So we have a pinch runner for UCLA, Grace Guzman, who came on to pinch run yesterday. Now pinch running here today for Garcia. So she'll be over at first base. These runs important for UCLA, trying to make their way back yet again. UCLA's half of the third was the only inning so far in this contest, only half inning that we've not seen either of these sides score. It's been a long, very tactical contest. And Malaulu, who walked and scored in the second inning, stepping in with a runner at first. Mala Ulu has just done such a great job. This is her freshman season, and again, Kelly Inouye Perez is calling on her as a defensive specialist, but she's holding her own at the plate as well and, and making great strides in the lineup as well. A fastball strike, 0-1.
This one's chopped right side, right there with it is Lynch, and she'll just chase down Malaulu halfway into the base paths. So three unassisted on the play. Guzman goes to second base. And Kelly Gooden will get her first at bat of the contest because she was pinch hit for by Julie Rodriguez in the second inning, so she has not had an official at bat yet. Gooden, as we talked about yesterday, led UCLA during that national championship campaign in 2019 with a 418 average. Was the Pac-12 batting champion, no less. And I always like to say, doing it all in the nine hole. Yeah. Last night, 0 for 2. Now an opportunity for here to drive in a run at the top of the order, waiting in the wings. And we'll see if UCLA can once again show off their situational hitting. Infielders at the corners pulled in. Showing bunt, they knew it. Picking up Flores, throws down to first just in time to get her. That put out goes two to four, and it moves Garcia to third. This is a great defensive play by Flores. Popping out right on the bunt. No hesitation at all. You don't have much time to, to see. You gotta play that ball, and that's a great, great play by Flores. It brings up Kinsley Washington, who singled in a run in the second inning, one for two today, and now is a runner standing 60 feet away here in the bottom of the fourth, trying to draw a little closer to Washington. This gives you an eight-game losing streak against the Bruins. And a strike offered. And the Huskies anticipating something. They pull up again Lynch and Espinoza at the corners, first and third, respectively. We've got Guzman over there at third base. And Washington having herself a good series in the leadoff spot for the first time this season the last two days. There's a slap hit, and it's for a strike, 0-2. Washington coming into this weekend usually was hitting in the eight hole and just has done a great job um, leading an average coming into the weekend. And I think for her birthday present yesterday, hmm. she got called up to, to lead off this, this Bruin lineup, but she does a great job because she possesses all the tools. Again, she's got speed, she's got power. She swings a great bat and she can go oppo. She can pull the ball. She can go to both sides of the field. Parents Dana and James, both Bruins. James, an All-American safety for UCLA and won a couple of Super Bowls with Dallas. Kinsley, the junior. Hit 321 a couple of years ago. Had four triples in that 2019 season. Good eye. And it draws the count even two and two. And she really embodies it's surprising to say that she has not been hitting in that leadoff spot, though you talked about you know Bubba Nichols hitting there and and UCLA having that position very well positioned out. But Kelly Noy Perez, that, that's just the versatility with some of the players she has that they can kind of slot these players in there and not miss a beat. Right. This one off the end of the bat. Center fielder Ulchin backing up, and that will do it. The Bruins leave a runner at third base, and they go scoreless for the second straight inning. The Huskies trying to break that losing streak to the Bruins. They lead at 6-2, heading to the fifth. You are watching Pac-12 Los Angeles, home of the UCLA Bruins and USC Trojans. Available on Spectrum and Cox. New movies and top hits, now at Redbox. Willy's Wonderland, starring Nicolas Cage. Vanquish, starring Morgan Freeman and Ruby Rose. And the theatrical home release of Tom and Jerry. Rent new movies at the kiosk and on demand. From action and suspense to comedy and drama, Redbox has something for everyone. Visit redbox.com for all the ways to watch. Gatorade Zero, all the electrolytes, zero sugar.
Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Get more out of zero. Now available with protein. My name's Kelly Inouye Perez, head softball coach at UCLA, and you're watching Pac-12 LA. Time now for our State Farm Showcase, and Washington going to the well with the power. Bailey Klingler with the two-run home run to put Washington further on top. And that's just a piece of hitting 101. If you want to know what staying inside the ball means, that is it right there. She stays inside that ball and takes it deep to the right side. 14 home runs on the season. And the Huskies with 10 hits here today against Megan Faramo and Rachel Garcia. And then Faramo came out again for a second time. And now batting to start the inning for Washington. Livy Sheely, who pinch hit for Noel He or pinch ran for her in the third inning. This is her first at bat. Most runs allowed this season by the Bruins. One and one the count, and it's an odd thing of its own to say that Faramo has given up five of those six runs, and a lot of the hits, a lot of the runs that were scored today with two outs from Washington. Yes, and definitely uncharacteristic, but we all knew on both sides that what Washington was capable of at yeah. the plate. One and two the count. Sheely at 2.07 on the season. A couple of runs batted in. Libby Sheely kind of in that right field platoon with uh, Madison Husky. Transferred from Auburn, where she redshirted in 2018. Torn ACL, didn't play. And look at Lisa Fernandez, UCLA great pitching coach for the Bruins. I'll be giving a lot of counsel out there today. This one's a swinging slap hit to the left side, one and two. Yes, Lisa Fernandez does such a great job with the battery and, and calling the pitches and making sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, and I mean, she's got a pitcher's heart for sure. You know, we talk about her being the GOAT, being yeah. responsible for the gold medals for USA mm. and being in the circle and all of those wins. So she definitely knows a thing or two about pitching, I think. Yeah. And two of those pitchers on Team USA in Tokyo and through UCLA and were counseled by her Ali Carda as well as Rachel Garcia, Lisa, four-time All-American, Honda Award winner, three-time Olympic gold medalist, 93 and seven. UCLA, 784 strikeouts, 0 0.22 ERA. Unbelievable when you look at those numbers. You gotta do a double take, even though, I mean, you know how great she was, but still you look at those and unbelievable. Yeah, Lisa's just ability to prepare. I've never seen anybody prepare like her. And one of my favorite stories about her is uh, when we prepared for the 2004 Olympics, we knew it was going to be hot. And she just prepared every single time in sleeves and sweats just to prepare for this weather. And just who does that, you know? Hmm. Lisa Fernandez does. Swing and a miss. A strikeout for Faramo as Sheely goes down for the first out of the inning. And this pitch is such a hard pitch to hit down and in, especially as a slap hitter. That is what you don't want to see as a slap hitter. If anything, I want to see anything that's out and way. So great pitch by Faramo. Yeah, she started out swinging at that pitch, and then she had to dance out of the way not to get hit by it. And that's the first out. And here is Husky. Swing and a miss. 0-1-1. Madison in 2019 hit her first career home run against the Bruins. Has five this season. Swing and a miss, and Faramo now showing what kind of what we were expecting to see coming in. And she's shown this year, and I guess Oregon State can attest to striking out 17 times. Definitely, I think we've seen a different frame of from the start of the game and definitely she's she's attacking these hitters and going right at them and trying to get ahead in the counts. That one rises up in the zone on Husky. Brady Shades are over to the 
left side of center field, leaving a big gap between herself and Jordan in right, uh, right field straight away. Husky a single and a run scored in the second, striking out in the third. And takes that one for a called strike three. So back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the inning. Their strikeouts number two and three for Faremo. And again, that drop in is just dirty. Actually, I apologize, that is not a drop in. That looks like a backdoor curve on the inside corner. And I think Faremo is just settling in and, and starting to hone in on her pitches and hitting her spots. Faremo, the only other start she made against Washington was on March 17, 2019. That aforementioned game that we talked about with Husky, pitch inside. She went four innings. Four runs, three earned, three strikeouts. The Bruins had a lot of offense that day, though. They won 15 to six. In fact, uh, Ternovello allowed 15 runs in five innings that day. So a typical that was. Count goes to one and one. A couple of two-run home runs for Washington. RBI singles in between from Olchin and he, and that has accounted for the Washington offense. Now UCLA trying to keep them off the board for the first time today. Let's play it out. It's a very long opener to this doubleheader because there's still another game coming up. 30 minutes after this one, foul back to the screen. And then they have tomorrow's game at 1 o'clock here from Easton Stadium. This one's lined to short over the leaping try from Perez. And another two out hit for Washington as Lynch gets aboard. And that's just a great piece of hitting right there. And that's exactly what you want to do on that pitch. And it's just amazing that this two out uh, hitting streak that the Huskies have. Eight of the 11 hits for Washington today have come with two outs. Oh, but one of the runs have been plated with two outs. In the outside corner for strike one here to Espinoza. Espinoza 0 for, for the weekend, 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. Chops this one foul, 0 and 2. We've got the second game of the doubleheader, as mentioned, coming up next about 30 minutes after this one. Washington and UCLA, but as we mentioned, that'll be a non-conference affair. Still nonetheless important for both record and RPI. Huskies, though, dead set about winning this one and ending that streak. Washington, the 2009 national champs, and UCLA, the 12-time NCAA champions. 13, if you include their AIAW title in 1978. Bouncing it up there, one and two. Yeah, a lot of history. You can see the back wall here at Easton Stadium. Sharon Backus, Sue Epstein, uh, Sue Enquist, uh, two of the greats. And then uh, Kelly Noy Perez, swing and a miss. And that'll end it. So the inning comes to an end. Three strikeouts for Faremo and the Bruins coming up down 6-2, bottom of the fifth. Introducing the 2021 Ram 1500, Motor Trend's Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. The exterior features class-exclusive multifunction tailgate and Ram box, while the interior keeps you connected with luxury. From Ram's new Eco Diesel to the 702 horsepower Hemi engine, experience power with efficiency. Claim your offer now during Ram Truck Month and see why Ram is America's most loyal truck brand. 20 as a first team all pack 12 player with 30 tackles, 6 TFLs, and 4 sacks and only 7 starts. 
and his physical traits, they are truly unique. He has squatted more than 700 pounds, benched over 420, has a 32-inch vertical leap, 15% body fat, and he clips 20 miles per hour on his GPS in practice. That athleticism proved to be a nightmare in the Pac-12 this past season and has the potential to do that in the NFL at 280 pounds and have an impact to both D-tackle or defensive end. softball has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Rawlings. Champions choose Rawlings. Downtown Los Angeles with the sun setting in the one Wilshire building there. Some the landmarks here in LA, UCLA. On the campus here in, Wash in Westwood, Washington leading 6-2, to two, held scoreless for the first time today in the top of the fifth. Let's see if UCLA can cash in. And they got the meat of the order coming up, Natasha, against Gabby Plain. Yes, and this is key, uh, key timing right now. Going into the bottom of the fifth, you have the top of your lineup, Perez, Jordan, and Garcia. I think this is where you want to see this offense and see what they're going to do and see if they're going to make some adjustments. Brianna Perez had the walk and the run scored in the first inning. Struck out looking in the second. The Huskies know that this is an important juncture here in this contest. And Perez trying to get the things started here in the bottom of the fifth. And takes just outside 1-0. and Perez riding a six-game hit streak. She's already extended her on-base streak to 11 games. Team leader in hits and I mean home runs and RBI coming in at just under 380. UCLA though just five hits today for a team that was eighth in the nation coming into the weekend and strike one on the bunt try. Brianna's sister Kylie played at UCLA 2015 to 2018 was a volunteer assistant in 2019 and going back to what we said earlier she's a psychology major too <laughs> <laughs> i might point out and it goes right side foul one and two so you'll see a lot if you want to hey if you want to get catch a glimpse of the softball players at ucl they gotta go to franz hall yeah <laughs> <laughs> But definitely, and maybe the psychology major is, you know, helping you with your at-bats yes. and maybe getting into the minds of the, the your, your opponents who you're facing. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Uh, you know, Kinsley Washington actually ha wants to be an FBI forensic psychologist. Which is out of this world. Yeah. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> and this one's lined to right field on the run. Nice play for Husky to flag that one down and keep the leadoff runner off. Well, I guess what it means, Natasha, is you want to stay on Kinsey Washington's good side. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I had to think about that. Yes, absolutely. But I think a, a very neat thing to note, Kinsey Washington just got accepted into the uh, grad program, Bree Perez, uh, Leah Jordan as well, and Genevieve Perez. It's a coaching master's degree that's brand new. Coach Enquist, Sue Enquist, who was our coach here at UCLA, she's now coaching this grad program, and very cool for them to not only compete, but you're getting your masters at UCLA. What? Well, uh, yeah, that, and, you know, and of course, and, and the COVID season kind of has necessitated it because with the NCAA buying laws, you do get an extra year, but you still have to keep taking classes. So if the student athletes have completed their undergraduate academics, it's the next step. You know, Washington has that program that leadership program as well and they have four graduates on the roster that one skied off to the right side out of play it was started by Jen Salling the uh, great Washington Husky and so it's almost out of necessity as well but like you said to be having a graduate degree from UCLA yeah, preeminent schools that's is pretty a dream cool. that's a dream Owen oh, 2 to Jordan. And that pitch outside. Jordan today singled in a run in the first, lined out to left field in the third. Two for five in the series. Pitch 
Judge outside, two and two. You know, it, it, it's just Gabby playing had a tough night last night. The Bruins had her kind of had her on the ropes early in this game. They had a strikeout to start the second inning after they played it a run in the first, and they had a double. They had the walk, but then the fielder's choice and a single, and they were unable to cash any more in. And then they left a runner on in the third and the fourth. Five total runners left on, and you figure a pitcher of her caliber, that's going to come back to bite you. Klingler over to first, and the out put out 4-3. Yeah, I think it's been nice to see Plane really settle in and, and kind of hone in and, and command her pitches a little bit more today. She's definitely hitting her spots, and I mean, our view from up here, her pitches are jumping, they're moving, there's a lot of movement, so that's very, very difficult for these uh, UCLA hitters to, to be able to put that ball in play and hit it hard. Genevieve Perez, who came in and pinch hit for Rachel Garcia in the third inning and struck out looking, stepping in for the second time today with the Bruins down four and no runners on, fouled off at the plate. Garcia coming in out of the DP spot to pitch in relief of Faremo and then came out and was pinch hit for. So presumably we have seen the last of Garcia today, but we'll see. steps Perez who played at San Diego State from 2015 to 2017 fouled back to the screen and quickly behind 0 2. Playing three strikeouts all looking by the way for UCLA today. A couple of walks two runs and five hits allowed. Looking for 80th win. Retire for ninth all time in the Washington Annals. Danny Lee, Natasha Watley with you. Game one of the doubleheader. Off speed there, but just misses. That is just a dirty, dirty pitch. <laughs> <laughs> you were wrong for that plane. You were wrong, but I mean, so right, because that's just good placement too. And you know, if Perez gets a hold of that, that's gonna be a tough pitch to even get a hold of. Playing the first ever player for Washington outside of the North American continent recruiter. She kind of recruited Washington, surprise <laughs> enough. Going in, we mentioned caught wind of Washington from a conversation from an alumnus over there. Just started emailing the program. Couldn't even imagine being Coach hmm. Tar on the receiving end of that. Like, who is this from Australia emailing us? Well, let's just go take a look. Okay. She said, luckily it didn't go to spam, or else somebody else might have gotten her. Swing and a miss, and another strikeout for playing. That's her fourth of the game, and UCLA is retired in order for the first time today. Washington leading 6-2, heading to the sixth, playing up to our old tricks. When you're building a business, it's easy to find a bank who says all the right things. They'll say they have the products and services you need, and blah, blah, blah. They go on and on saying they'll blah, blah this, and blah, blah that. But when it comes time to actually expanding your business, well, that's when you need Pacific Premier Bank. We're completely dedicated to supporting our clients' growth. And that's no blah, blah, blah. Pacific Premier Bank, where business meets opportunity. The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape. Love as an action. For 175 years, New York Life has been helping people act on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, we got it right. We did good. Sis Bates and the Huskies leading 6-2 over UCLA, looking for their first win in Westwood in five years. And speaking of Sis Bates, continuing a great tradition of shortstop. It's at Washington. Jamie Clark, who was an alternate on that 04 gold winning medal winning team that you were a part of, Natasha, and so many great names on that list. Yes, and I mean, when you think of lineage, you think of some great shortstops. And Jamie Clark, I, I, I competed against her, played with her, and she was just a six foot athletic goddess. She had effortless range. She had like this, this crazy wingspan. Um, and then talk about Jen Salling, had the opportunity to play with her with the USSA Pride. And my goodness, she has a gun. She's going to compete for the Olympics for Canada. Just one of the most savvy shortstops I've played with. 
Jadlin Alchin singling to start off the Washington Six. And Salling on Canada on the national, t uh, the uh, Olympic team as well. You mentioned Clark and yes. then Ali Aguilar, who's also a member of Team USA yes. in this uh, Olympic season. And so, Chris, and what a shortstop. I mean, she'll play most likely second base on the USA team, but she could play short, and she's so crisp and just has amazing range. And then none other than Sis Bates, who rounds out the shortstops. And I'm a sucker for a great shortstop. <laughs> and Sis Bates, four, 14 airs in her career, yeah. which means she had 70, 40, 749 chances and a 981 percent fielding wow. percentage. And that's just amazing. That's amazing. And speaking of great shortstops, I think uh, you might recognize that lady right there, Natasha Watley, Olympic gold medalist in 2004 and a Bruin Hall of Famer. Well, she knows her shortstops, to say the least. I'm a little biased to my shortstops. I, I, I love them. Great play there by a third baseman, Tessa Malaulu, diving all out to snag that bump pop up. I, I wonder, we were talking about, as you see, this great play right here, Malaulu coming in. And that's a sweet play, and that's a big out right there, too, just to, to nip this offense in the bud and, and get Bates out. That's a huge, huge out, great play. Yeah, and Sis Bates. Just knows that that was a great play there on the third baseman, diving all out to get it. You know, that left side of the infield so unforgiving, and we were talking about Sis Bates, who had the, the glove. She called Carmella <laughs> and never gave up until it finally wore out. Did you have any any kind of fixation with your glove like that? I did not, and I'm now hate, hating myself that I probably should have. <laughs> I probably would have had some successes like Sis. This one's granted in left field by Klingler. Base hit moves Alchin to second. So two on for the Huskies now. The superstitious sort, though? Were you? I was very superstitious. I will say that. I had to wear wristbands and wear my hair the same way. Don't step on the line. Um, listen to music in a certain order. Um, you know, just weird random things that you think makes you successful. Don't know why we do those things, but you know, hey, you gotta have a routine, right? Kelly Noy Perez team trying to keep this one right where it is, down four runs, moving into the later stages of this contest. And the Huskies knocking on the door again. 13 hits today, including two in this inning. Sammy Reynolds has accounted for a double and two hits today. This one's a flare to left center field on the run. Brady collides with the left fielder, Gooden. No catch made. Washington held up. And now a play at the plate, diving in and just scoring ahead of the throw. Klingler and the Huskies go on top, 7-2. to two. So we'll see that again. That one was up, and we'll see. And, and that's a defensive mishap, but good job by the runner by being able to see that play being made. But what you want to do is you want to stay off the bag on that, anticipate that they're going to catch. But it looked like she was going to catch. That's why she went back to tag. But ideally, um, you want to make sure you stay off the bag and anticipate them not catching it, because even if they do catch it, you probably may yeah. not tag. That was Olchin that scored, and Klingler goes to second. Reynolds at first, so they had to hang on. A, little, a modest break for the Bruins, even though another run scores, and now 14 hits on the board for Washington. The RBI for Reynolds. She already scored a run today, as her 33rd run driven in. And here's Flores. Already with a two-run home run, a double, two runs scored, fouls it off. This one in on the hands and fouled off to the side again, one and two, the Huskies this season. They've scored six runs, at least six runs. 
21 times in their 13 and 0 and they score between six to nine runs. Well, I mean, you figure you get six, seven runs on anybody, especially with Gabby playing on the mound. This pitch outside and it's two and two. So not normally used to seeing UCLA, who came in number two in the nation in ERA, 1.03, giving up those seven runs. This one in the hands, goal foul. UCLA giving chase. And back in the box, those floor is hitting 344. Now at nine home runs and 41 driven in this season. with floor is now number three all time washington rbi just one away from number three and home runs and oh what a diving play from wiz on the line foul and nearly stayed on first base to double off the runner and two that is a sweet play by wiz and even just thinking about the sun being in her her face at first base right there but that's a heads up play right there So a couple of great plays to account for the two outs in the inning. And changes of foot. We have a pinch hitter for the Huskies. See, it's actually Noel He coming back in. So He, who started in the DP spot, was pinch run for and then Livy Sheely stayed in and hit for her in the fifth inning, striking out. He comes back in. She was one for two earlier. Remember, as a starter, she can re-enter once, fouls it off. Noel 302, seven home runs, 13 runs batted in. Once again, the Huskies hitting with two outs, and that's where they've done a lot of the damage here today. All right, so the Bruins coming up in the next inning will be Wiz, Brady, and Garcia. And they're starting to run out of outs here. Here in game two of the series, this pitch runs up on He. Count evens up. UCLA at 9 and 1 in the conference, Washington 12 and 3 in second place. Huskies trying to get back to within half a game of the Bruins in the standings. Taking strike 3 though is Noel He and that spells an end to the 6th inning but not before Washington does get a run but the defense by the Bruins makes certain that it wasn't more. Great play from Kinsey Washington. 7-2 Washington. New movies and top hits now at Redbox. Willie's Wonderland starring Nicolas Cage. Vanquish starring Morgan Freeman and Ruby Rose. And the theatrical home release of Tom and Jerry. Rent new movies at the kiosk and on demand. From action and suspense to comedy and drama, Redbox has something for everyone. Visit redbox.com for all the ways to watch. I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Time now. For
for a Rawlings player of the game, and Morgan Flores started this one off with the offensive attack for Washington. Two-run homer off the board, and also flashing a little bit of leather, Natasha. Yeah, absolutely. Getting it done on both sides of the field, and you know that Flores is one of the leaders for Washington, so be able to step up today at the plate and on defense, making no hesitation on this play, and definitely stepping up and leading for this Washington team. Two for four, a double, a home run, two runs batted in. All out assault from the Husky bat. Seven runs, 14 hits. And Mick comprising the battery with playing again. This time with different results than last night when the Bruins won six to one. All right, so coming up for the Bruins, Wiz, who made that great play at first base. Last inning, Brady and Garcia. UCLA with just five hits tonight. Different story than what we saw on Friday night. All right, so Delaney Wiz. Stepping in, a single and a ground out. Comprising her day at the plate. Take strike one. This one's laced left side, but foul. And quickly 0-2 to Wiz on the 92nd pitch from Gabby Plain. Elaine, her sister Stevie, played at UCLA. Walk on that played with her on the national championship team. Delaney actually wasn't originally a recruit from UCLA. She came over from LMU, Loyola Marymount, where she was the All-West Coast Conference second team selection a few years back. Liz has just been such a great pickup for UCLA. I mean, she's been an asset offensively, defensively. Again, we talk about the depth, um, just her ability to, to be versatile, to, to play anywhere on the field. And But more importantly, I think her presence as a hitter in this lineup, too, she's a force to be reckoned with. She's not an easy out. She is definitely always a hard out, always putting the ball in play. Wiz led the Lions a few years ago with 13 home runs. She has a lot of pop as well. Seven this season. 1-1 one, one pitch from Plain runs inside, and the count goes to two in one. As we mentioned, Wiz, Brady, and Garcia, who is two for two today. And the count two and two. So the correction from Calvin Walker over at third base. Helping to keep Brandon Blum honest. And for that matter, us. <laughs> All right, here we go. Playing back to the circle. So it's grounded left side, and it is a foul ball. All right, so what's the Bruins' approach here? You know, you're you're down to six outs. You've got down five runs and facing plane. Yes, and at this point, it's singles. At this point, if you can just single them to death, because when you start to think about we've got this a five, we're down by five, and you're trying to hit the ball out the park and you're trying to be too big, that's when you come outside of yourself. And so if I'm the Bruins right now, I am just trying to think one base at a time. Swing and a miss. So another strikeout for Gabby. Playing quickly, racking them up. We told you that she came in as the nation's leader in strikeouts. And again, this is in plain fashion. I mean, I think her pitches are jumping. They're falling off the table right now. And she's got so much command of her pitches right now. Five strikeouts now for Gabby. Came in with 200 and 55 strikeouts, way more than the next highest pitcher out there. So it's chopped at the plate by Brady. He's had a tough weekend at the plate. 0 for 5, couple of strikeouts so far in the series. Year 
356, seven homers, 28 RBI, which is 28th in the nation, Softball America Freshman of the Year. And when bounces up, skips right off Morgan Flores. And the Huskies with two in the first, one in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, one in the sixth. A lot of tough luck losses against the Bruins, including the last two series sweeps, and including Friday's loss. Eight in a row, and they haven't won against UCLA since 2017 anywhere, and then at UCLA since 2016. Pitch outside. Yes, that's the name of the game, score early and mm -hmm. score often. And, and then we went into the weekend saying that that was UCLA's pride and joy this year. They've done it 17 times, had done it, and had their biggest run differential in that first inning, which was a large part as to why they've had the success. Two and one, this one's hammered. Right field on the run, and it will not be caught, and Maya Brady has hit it out for her seventh home run. That one, a no doubt about it, Natasha, just laser beam. Right, and that's what you talk about, the effortless power that she has. I mean, she doesn't even take a full cut on that, and that is already sent to right field. Right off the bat, you know that that's going out, and she has such a grace with that swing and such a beautiful swing. And she comes to home plate and immediately for Garcia trying to charge up her teammates. So a run back for the Bruins. It's now seven to three. That was the 100th pitch from Gabby Plain. And now checking in Garcia, now working on an eight game hitting streak after she doubled in the second and singled in the fourth. And another meeting in the circle. And we told you, Gabby Plain, she does a lion's share for Washington pitching-wise. She appeared three times in the series win against Oregon last week. And the Huskies have been trying to find that number two option. They don't have Alvelo anymore. Right, right. And she's definitely been carrying a ton of the pitching yep. load. And I, I think that she knows that. And, and so especially coming in today for Washington, their game plan is like, when we have playing on the mound, we have to win because we don't know um, who our, our next go-to is. Gabby making her 24th start of the season. The other four pitchers they've used combined have made 18 starts. Count now 2-0, oh, maybe a little fatigue from Gabby Plain. Yes, and once you hit that 100 pitch mark, your pitch count definitely goes up and, and you're starting to see the fatigue for sure. And, and that's, as a pitcher, that's, you know, especially in softball, we are able to go the full seven innings, you know, more differently than if you're watching a baseball yeah. game. Um, but for playing, you know, you want to make sure that you're still keeping pitches sharp and, you know, but keeping in mind that she is at, at a high pitch count right now. And, and notwithstanding the pitches, but all the, the emotional roller coaster. We talked about trying to make the Olympic team for Australia, all the travel over the last couple of years. And issues a four pitch walk to Garcia after the Brady home run. And now the Bruins trying to start something here in the bottom half of the sixth inning, and it'll bring up Malaulu. And here comes Lance Glasso out of the Washington dugout. We'll see what transpires here. The Bruins trailing seven to three. They got a run back. They have a runner at first base. And out comes Kelly Anoy Perez to talk to home plate umpire Brandon Blum. So he might be seeing some more changes before long. Right now. Coach Glasgow's probably coming out and just checking to see where she's at. You know, do we need to bring somebody else in? But if I'm Coach Glasgow, we're like, we need you to pull it through. <laughs> we need you to stay in there and stay strong. We know we've got a couple more outs. Uh, 
We've got the second game of our doubleheader coming up 30 minutes after this one. Another top five matchup, Washington-UCLA. Game three of the series that will not count against the conference record, but nevertheless will be important for these two teams. Overall record, RPIs we talked about, and you know, as far as this budding rivalry goes, it is important nonetheless. And that pitch in the dirt, but going nowhere is Garcia. And I think in between there, Kelly Knight Perez was going over to Brandon Blum about the number of meetings that the Huskies have had in the circle. Making sure there's the 15th year head coach of the Bruins, been a part of this program for so many years, went all the way back to the 80s. Definitely Coach Inouye is feeling that the momentum, you know, was coming on, on the Bruins side. So she's, you know, hey, don't let, don't let them call time. Hmm. One and one they got in. Yeah, Kelly's the son, Mikey, over playing second base over at Jackie Robinson Stadium for the UCLA men's, uh, for the baseball team just down the road. That stadium over just off campus. That one runs in, just get in the corner for a strike one and two. And what's so remarkable about this Washington defense, this is just, again, a dirty pitch, but every time Plain throws these dirty pitches, I love hmm. seeing the reaction from up the middle from Bates and Klingler. Like, their reaction is instantly a, a, a fist pump. And just that support behind you, that's got to be fun to pitch with. In on the corners again, watch. That's one slap to the left side. Nice piece of hitting for Malaulu, getting a base hit. That moves Garcia to second base. And the Bruins are in business now with a run already in on the home run from Brady. And now Gooden at the plate. And here comes that rule with slap hitter stepping outside of the batter's box. And definitely her foot is a foot outside and on the plate. And that's been key for slappers to make sure that they stay in that batter's box. And if you can, step on the line, but you can't step yeah. out of the box. So she did. So there you go. See the left foot right on the plate. So she is officially out. That put out goes two unassisted there. So it'll set that is a, a heartbreaker for the Bruins here because Garcia goes back to first, takes the wind out of the sails. Definitely, and that was going to be a momentum starter for the Bruins and a great piece of hitting, but that rule is very, very firm and it's keeping these slap hitters honest and keeping yep. them inside the box. And, you know, I was a slap hitter and, you know, that rule hurts my heart <laughs> to know that that exists um, because sometimes you want to go out and you want to get those pitches, off, you know, that are off the plate, but definitely keeping slappers accountable. Strike one issued to Gooden. 0 for 2 today, 0 for 4 for the weekend. Just like that, two outs. And the Bruins now working with a little bit of extra adversity here in the bottom half of the sixth against Washington. This one's popped left side, foul. We welcome those of our viewers tuning in from Washington State Cal Baseball. Danny Lee, Natasha Watley, the UCLA Hall of Famer alongside. Top five matchup, game two of the series after the Bruins took Friday night, six to one. Today it's been all Washington leading seven to three here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. And UCLA having to try and rally because they've been trailing throughout. And Gabby Plain, the nation's leading wins, strikeout pitcher. And to get her first win as a starter against the Bruins. And this one swung on and missed. Foul tipped. One and two. And go to another slap hitter. And facing plain as a slap hitter, that's just rough. That's tough. As a slap hitter, you're moving through the box. You're trying to put this ball in play. And something that's breaking hard and down, it's hard to place that ball and get that ball in play because it's messing with your eye line as, as a slap hitter. And so just a tough, tough, Pitcher two slap off of. Espinosa coming in at third. This one's 
hit toward right center field. Right there is Ulchin to put it away. So the unlucky break there on the Malaulu single that wasn't to be. The Bruins do get a run on the Brady home run, but they trail 7-3 heading into the seventh. My name's Kelly Inouye Perez, head softball coach at UCLA, and you're watching Pac-12 LA. When you're building a business, it's easy to find a bank who says all the right things. They'll say they have the products and services you need, and blah, blah, blah. They go on and on saying they'll blah, blah this and blah, blah that. But when it comes time to actually expanding your business, well, that's when you need Pacific Premier Bank. We're completely dedicated to supporting our clients' growth. And that's no blah, blah, blah. Pacific Premier Bank, where business meets opportunity. Gatorade Zero. All the electrolytes. Zero sugar. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Anything you can be, I can be greater. Uh, sooner or later, I'm greater than you. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. Hey. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. Get more out of Zero. Now available with protein. Well, it started in the first inning for Washington. Flores hit a two-run home run, and the Huskies have not looked back in scoring seven runs, 14 hits, the most amount of runs UCLA has given up this season. And Megan Foremo, that is a stat line that we're not used to seeing, Natasha. Definitely, and, you know, just the pitching staff between Foremo and Garcia, you know, not characteristic, but again, we keep saying this Husky lineup. I mean, they're just an offensive threat, and they're dangerous. And they're they're able to put that ball in play, and they've been uh, pressing all game long. And remember what we said going into this broadcast. They were 0 for 7 yesterday. The bare minimum of at bats with two outs, just seven at bats. They were 0 for 7 yesterday. Today, 7 for 12 with two outs. And Faremo on the hook for her third loss of the year, unless UCLA can rally in the bottom half of the seventh. All right, in this inning for Washington, it's Husky, Lynch, and Espinoza. And actually, to be Taryn Atley now pinch hitting. So Atley, who we talked to earlier, getting a chance to play here, the senior for Washington, fifth year senior from Sacramento, California, at 441. Was a starter last year. This one's popped left side, and Perez has it for the first out. But it's just like we were talking about with the extra players carried over from the COVID season. There's still only nine, ten positions out there, Natasha. So a lot of players are going to have to be kind of sacrificing. Right, right. It's just, it's a hard thing. And I mean, again, I think that all of these athletes have been so resilient through all of this, this COVID year. And, you know, going into a game, you may or may not have a game next weekend because you don't know if there's going to be a COVID scare or COVID outbreak. So um, I just think that these athletes have just done an incredible job of just being resilient and controlling what they can control. Everyone's popped out of play. Alyssa Garcia couldn't get it, but it looked like that was a, her dad right there made the cat barehanded catch. <laughs> so one Garcia <laughs> got it. All right, Owen won the count. Seven to three, the count. Since so popped left side, and not enough real estate for Malaulu. Yeah, there's only family members and parents and such in the stands looking on. But like we said yesterday, good to see non cardboard cutouts yeah yes it's I and mean, just being a spectator and i mean even just for myself just being here and seeing the game live it's just such a different feel this past year has just been so hard for everybody and so just nice to kind of get back to the normal side of things and and just to be able to come out and enjoy a game and especially for these parents to to be able to come out and support their their kids yeah you saw there on the cutaway that was her dad it goes by tony who's a he played in the minor leagues for the Seattle Mariners organization, so he's pretty good. <laughs> he could catch a few balls. 0-2. Oh there he is on the right side. Just put his hands up in the air. He had a smattering of applause.
And it's nice to see. I mean, we were talking talk about some of the stories of these ladies making long trips, uh, Rachel Garcia included, and trying to commute to play travel ball. And it's a lot of sacrificing on the part of the, the parents. Yeah, Sis Bates' dad, John, is the story of her making the six, seven hour drive down to Huntington Beach to play travel ball. Parents are, are as important as the players on the field, certainly, and that put out goes. 6-3. There's so much that goes into becoming an elite athlete, and parents are definitely the backbone for most of these athletes. And I, I think if the parents don't make it a priority, it can't be a priority for that 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 athlete. And so I think that that it's huge just hearing those stories of hearing the sacrifices that these parents have made. And if you ask the parents, they would say they would do it over and over again. I mean, it's this Bates story. I was, I mean, we're talking about three weekends a year, 12 months out of the year. Hundreds and hundreds of miles, but worthy of note for sure. The sacrifices, a swing and a miss. Espinoza, 0 for 5 this weekend with three strikeouts. A lot of K's in the scoring book among Washington, but also a lot of hits today. A couple of home runs. In fact, there have been nine strikeouts to account for the Huskies out, but they're leading 7-3. Struck in the top of the first, and they haven't looked back, despite the Bruins' rallies. UCLA will have the top of the order coming up. Check swing. Did she go around? No swing, says Calvin Walker over there at third base. The fact that they scored in every inning but one in the fifth, I mean, I, it's against this UCLA team, like, that's not easy to do against this pitching staff, and they just have continued to put pressure. Popped out, left center, and coming in is Gooden to put it away. A 1-2-3 inning. That was the first 1-2-3 inning for Washington today. All right, last chance for UCLA coming up, down 7-3. The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape, love as an action. For 175 years, New York Life has been helping people act on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, we got it right. We did good. New movies and top hits, now at Redbox. Willy's Wonderland, starring Nicolas Cage. Vanquish, starring Morgan Freeman and Ruby Rose. And the theatrical home release of Tom and Jerry. Rent new movies at the kiosk and on demand. From action and suspense to comedy and drama, Redbox has something for everyone. Visit redbox.com for all the ways to watch. UCLA in game two of the series trying to end an eight game losing streak to the Bruins and a much different story for Gabby playing here today Natasha. Yes today we are seeing a, a completely different playing from yesterday. She's getting ahead in these hitters going straight at them relying on her movement and having so much command on her pitches and hitting her spots. Yeah, Gabby Plain yesterday lifted in the fourth inning today. Even though she had a little bit of a struggle early, she has done well. She struck out five, has allowed three runs and six hits in the Bruins, and that smile will get even bigger if she can finally pick up a win as a starter against UCLA. To do it, she's going to have to retire the top of the order, Washington, Perez, and Jordan to close out this one. 111 pitches, 69 strikes, and presumably we're going to see her tomorrow, Sunday, 1 o'clock. And they, if this score stands, what will be the deciding game in this series? Right, and I think that that was just great strategy on the Washington side of just, you know what, she's going to start again today. We got to, we got to win with her on the mound. All right, so in steps Washington, singled in a run in the second, one for three today, and takes strike one. Megan Faramo pitched four and a third today, giving up six of the seven runs. He also allowed 
Total of 10 hits today. Very atypical. That one runs up and in on Washington. Once again in the leadoff spot for the Bruins. Hitting 382 for UCLA. But trying to do what you did yesterday against Washington, trying to make plain work. And to get on base and set the stage for Perez Jordan to follow. Get off to the left side and one and two the count. I talked with um, Coach Walker before the game, just asking him his thoughts on who are the leaders. And he immediately went to Kinsley Washington and how she just leads with always with a smile, always with a head nod, always laughing and giggling, taking things lightly, not taking herself too seriously. Hmm. And so I think that it's just speaks a testament to her of why she's had so much success of just being able to be loose and, and, and just have fun playing the game. And, and she's even been more pivotal with the absence of Bubba Nichols as she swings and misses. Bubba missing her ninth straight game with that left wrist injury and still out indefinitely. And Washington, like we said, playing all over the diamond. And that's a rise out, and that's just a pitch out of the zone. But again, it's zipping through the zone, and so looks good to Kinsley. And especially she's got two strikes, so she's trying to just probably try to foul that off. That was on pitch number 117. The strikeout is the sixth for Gabby Plain, looking for her 80th win here tonight. Bunt and a strike. That's a great call by Washington on that because if you are paying attention to Brie Perez, she is being very aggressive in her first pitches and so starting her off with off speed and Perez probably thinking that and showing bunt on that. So just a great all around on both sides. Sun is finally set here, a game that's pushing three hours. So we're gonna foul back. This, this guy's the feel of a, a contest you might see in Oklahoma City. The way this one's played out with all the moves early on, the pinch hitting, the pinch running, the pitching change for UCLA, and then bringing Faramo back on. Perez walked and scored in the first inning, 0 for 2 otherwise. That pitch runs inside. This is just the 119th appearance for Gabby playing in her Washington career and considered that she's looking for her 80th win in her 56th com com complete game. Quite impressive numbers there, in addition to all those nation leading numbers we talked about. And she gets to come back for more. Yeah. <laughs> Bad news for the Pac 12. <laughs> Probably on the heels of what will be an Olympic appearance. Yes. Everything shakes out properly in June. Two and two the count for Australia. And she'd come into the weekend starting 16 fewer games than anyone above her on the charts at Washington among those winning as pitchers. Looking for a 24th win against just the one loss that she suffered last night. Swinging a line drive center field and that'll land right in front of Alchin for the Bruins. Base hit here in the seventh inning, their seventh of the game. That's a good piece of hitting. That's what we talk about, hitting it right back up the middle. UTM up the middle. That was an, on the outer corner, and she just takes it right back up the middle. Perez with that base hit, extending her hitting streak to seven games now. Just seen her average hover around 380. Now Leah Jordan, the Bruins down four, down to their final two outs. And Jordan hit the monster home run yesterday. Drove in a run with a single in the first, lining out to left and grounding out to second here today. And a fastball for strike, 123 pitches now for Gabby Plain. And the UCLA dugout trying to pump up their team. No quit in this bunch for sure. That one runs outside. 30 minutes after this one, we'll have the second of the double header. It 
as we talked about in the non-conference affair. Pitch inside and with the coaches remaining mum on the rotations. And there is some gamesmanship there, but I, I, I'm willing to guess that Holly Azevedo uh, will be going for UCLA and not Gabby Plain. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I definitely don't did. think we'll see Plain in the nightcap, but um, definitely Savito, I think we can count on seeing her in the nightcap. And Kelly Lynch, who's been playing in the field for Washington, will probably go tonight. A line drive to center field, and Alchin trying to double up Perez. So hitting it right on the screws again, Jordan, but this time at a fielder. That's the second out, so the Bruins down to their final out and here comes Garcia back into the spot. She sat the last couple of at bat positions out for Genevieve Perez. Her only at bat was in the first inning. She grounded out to short and then Genevieve Perez came in, struck out twice and now Garcia stands between Washington playing and the end of that losing streak against the Bruins and evening up the series. Garcia pitched two and two thirds today, struck out four, gave up a run in four hits. Swinging tips it, and when won the count. And a finale tomorrow, one o'clock, UCLA and Washington, which looks like it'll be deciding this series winner. The big one, especially for Washington, when you consider they've got a struggling Utah team, came in the bottom of the conference. And they also have Stanford, which has struggled this season, left on the docket. Chance for Washington, perhaps, to win the conference title if things play out right for them. Because consider, just based on circumstances and the indiscriminate amount of games being played, Washington coming in today 12-3, and three, UCLA 9-1. and one. But if they win tomorrow's game, they'll be even in the loss column, and they could, in theory, win out and at least a share of the conference. That one's in the dirt, two and one. Yeah, it's the importance of this, this series. And, you know, you want that Pac-12 championship because that's easy seating going into postseason. Um, and getting the chance to host and, and all the things. And so you, you want that, that seating. This one inside corner strikes. The Bruins down to their final strike. And Washington has won the conference three times, 2000, 2010, and they shared it with UCLA in 2019, UCLA nine times. The Huskies and Gabby playing 130 pitches here and trying to get the complete game. Looking for a 17th complete game on the season against Garcia, the pitch just outside. Count goes full, and Perez over there at first base. He's run very well. And timeout called. Kelly Perez wants a check on the count, and it's actually three and two. So that's the second time we've seen a count check there. Now it's a full count. Scoreboard has it had it at two and two. We had it at three and two. But down on the field, it was two and two. You got to watch out for those things. When you're a manager of the game, you notice those things. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so here we go. Full count, Perez. Over at first base, Garcia at the plate on pitch number 132. Outside, and Plain's going to have to go a little longer as the walk is drawn. That is the third walk of the game from Plain. And that's why you want to check on that scoreboard, because if we get that another ball, we want to make sure that we get that four balls. And Kelly, anyways, eyes. And UCLA is going to send out Anna Vines, who started yesterday at second base. She'll be pinch running now for Garcia. Give an extra speed on the base pass, and only Wiz will come up for UCLA. Still down to that final out. 
Trailing by four, trying to get one more base runner to bring the tying run to the plate. And I wonder what that conversation's like right now between Flores, Lance Glasso on the left, and Gabby playing with 132 pitches and looking to try and polish off the Bruins here. Right, and Coach Glasso is probably just saying, you know, we've got one more out, you know, just use the D. Ground outs are good, um, but just continue to, to go at these hitters. Steps whiz, bottom in the seventh here. First pitch swinging and fouls it off to the left. Delaney today, a single in the third inning, struck out in the sixth and also grounded out in the first. Hitting 309 and well, between the last two days, Gabby playing closing in on 200 pitches against UCLA. Swinging a ground ball into left center field around. Comes Perez to plate the run. Runners at the corners. They're not finished yet. Here comes the tying run for the Bruins. The Wiz drives in her 24th run of the season. Perez brings it home. It's now 7-4. And we've got more pinch running going on. Alana Snow will come in for Wiz. And wouldn't you like this if you're UCLA? Maya Brady has been hungering at the plate, had the home run in the sixth inning after going 0 for her first five in this series, Natasha. Yes, and if you're Maya Brady, this is exactly where you want to be. Yes, it's not how you start, but it's how you finish. But this is such a great swing that we saw earlier in the game. But this is exactly where you want to be. Game's on the line. You want to be the one to be called upon on the, and up at the plate. The great athlete and just a young clutch player. So she's probably home from her mom and aunts and uncle. Five-time Super Bowl MVP. This one's chopped though up the first baseline. Brady in a rush and tapped out by Lynch. And that's how it comes to an end. UCLA drops this decision seven to four to Washington. That ends an eight-game losing streak to the Bruins. So the